Good evening, everybody. Welcome back once again to Rogues Gallery Live. Like I said, welcome to Rogues Gallery Live, everybody. My name is Chris the Batman Statue Collector, and this is Rogues Gallery 114. Uh, we've entitled this one Edition Size Insanity, uh, which it uh, definitely has been an interesting week. Uh, but anyway, welcome to the show. We also have with us, of course, Wayne Manor North's own. Dan, how's it going, sir? Now in a new low edition size. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> right. ES of one. That's pretty impressive. So, man, your wife lucked out on that one. <laughs> Hey, happy to see everybody. How's it going? Doing okay. Uh, we also have Mr. Eric B. from All Things Art right here. How's it going, sir? Hey, guys. Edition, size matters. <laughs> it does. Edition, <laughs> size matters. Absolutely. <laughs> and last but certainly not least tonight. All day. <laughs> Just thought of it out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And last but not least, uh, we have, of course, Mr. Jeff Delaney from Secret Sanctuary. How's it going, sir? Going well, but I have nothing funny to say about it. Oh, stuff. come on. There's got to be something funny, but I'm going to challenge you by the end of the show. Something funny. Okay. All right. So, it's you know, good. I know, I know that you are a writer. I mean, I know you can come up with something. I'll try. <laughs> you picked me last. All the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, and also I want to give a shout out to Jeff Morris. Uh, Jeff was busy tonight, so we couldn't make the show. So it is the four of us this evening. Um, but we have some, uh, I think, really good topics to talk about tonight, and obviously photos to look at as well. Um, so what's what's new with you guys? Anything new in the caves? Anything new, exciting going on in your lives? I've got a cool comic coming tomorrow. What do you got? It's Wiz Comics number 13. Oh. So it'd be the 13th appearance of Captain Marvel, also known as Shazam. Um, 1940, I think. Or is it 41? 40 or 41? Wow. And it's the second highest graded copy on the planet. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. And it's only a 6.5. Wow. So it tells, it tells you how rare it is. The that's second nuts. It's only a 6.5. So how did you how did you come across it? It was on eBay, and the price was reasonably fair, and I was able to hunt the, hunt the guy off of eBay. Nice. And give him a offer, which was basically his asking price minus eBay fees. Yep. Which he accepted. So very yeah. nice. That's great. It's so it's so frustrating to try to because I know how hard it is to like try to get off of eBay, like to try to like you know do all these codes and things to try to because like you know that the buyer will will work with you. They just want to avoid the darn fees, and that's that's the problem. It's like oh, it's so frustrating because they asked me how in the world did you find me, <laughs> and it's, it actually wasn't that easy. I went to the CGC boards and searched for his eBay name. That's and awesome. His CGC name was the same and came right up. So a little tricks of the trade for Mr. Delaney tonight. So that's a great right. way to do it. Uh, again, because I, I know these guys are, you know, they're interested to sell, but a lot of times that, you know, it might sit there a long time because of the price and the fees, because they jack up the, the cost so much sure. uh, to offset the fees. Although it used to take out PayPal fees. And now it's, I think it's just the eBay fees, I think, mm -hmm. but still same crazy. Amount, it's basically yeah. the same amount. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. Still yeah. sucks. Uh, well, congratulations. Um how about Eric and Dan? Anything new in your world? Nothing statue-wise. I've been binging. Well, not binging. Uh, I started the Boba Fett series this week. In oh, preparation right. for the. Yeah, I heard you need to watch that before the Mandalorian because there's some uh, episodes with the Mandalorian in it, and uh, I'm glad I watched it because I stayed away from it because everybody said they didn't like it, and I'm watching it and I'm loving the show. So, I got. How, how far into it are you? Uh, I have one more to go. I'm up to the finale. So I'm up to episode that, eight. That show cracked me up because you got like five or six episodes of Boba Fett, and yeah. then Mando totally took over that series. Yeah, he did. I've been watching The Mandalorian. Yeah. I mean, it's and it's it, you, Boba Fett's an interesting enough character. You would think that they wouldn't necessarily. I mean, I guess it it did kind of feel like it dragged on just a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I I thought that was funny too. I'm like, wow, it just it just became Mandalorian. It's just like. <laughs> It just is it's bridging the gap to the next season. I'm assuming that it picks up right kind of where they left off would, would be my guess. I don't know. But um, I know Mandalorian just started up again, and I haven't seen that first episode of you guys yet. Well, the second episode came out today. Right. The first one was good, but I'm hearing the second one is awesome. 
the second we so just watched it with my wife before I came on the show here tonight. I see. <laughs> two thumbs up. It's awesome. All right. Yeah, it's that's awesome. what we're gonna do after the show. Yeah, it's really good. That's awesome. Well, that's what we're we're gonna have to do. We're in the middle of packing because we're heading down to Texas for spring break. Um, so, uh, we'll be out on the beach for a week, which will be nice. And I'll be driving my golf cart, which I love at the place where we go. You get to drive the golf carts even in town, um, which is a lot of fun. So, um, very, very cool. Um, but, uh, I was going to say too, that I've been watching the last of us and I know you guys have, yeah. too. Man, I, I love that show. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Only one more. I yeah. know that's crazy. There's only one more episode. Yeah. yeah. Sucks. It feels like it's a short season, but maybe it's not. I mean, it just feels like it's been short. Yeah, that's a good show. But I love it, and I, I'm assuming they're going to do a season two. They are. Which is cool. They announced it after the first episode. After the first episode, that's right, yeah. It was really? Crazy. So they yeah. already knew it was going to be a hit even then? Yeah, and, and the viewership has increased with every ep episode since the first. Yeah, oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. The big question is, what's the next big video game show to come out? Because I got to think Hollywood's all a Twitter with, uh, yeah, no intended <laughs> with what's possible now with video games. See, I thought you were going to say the big question is, what are they going to do for season three? Because they're oh. mirroring the game, and there's only yep. been, yeah, yeah. So after That's season good. two, it's yep. good. it'll be like. Yeah, it'll be like The Walking Dead, where originally they went off on their own, away from the Kirkman books. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what they'll have to do, or wait. I don't know if there's a third game in development. I would assume there probably is. Um, so, um, speaking of season three, really quick, because I've been watching Pennyworth, and I asked this on Facebook, and I didn't get a response. If anybody is watching and you know the answer without spoiling it, is there some type of conclusion? Because I know they stopped the show suddenly, you know, when they do, you know, guys came in and took over dc so i'm wondering if it just ends with no answers or if it actually has some type of conclusion to season three it's a good question um that, that's a show that i started watching i think i got like three or four episodes in and then i just quit um i thought i still um, thought it was good but i just i don't know if it didn't hold our interest or we started getting busy with other things but i know yeah, you, you gotta it. you gotta stay with it i'm halfway through season two so there's three seasons total Oh, wow. Really? Oh, I didn't even yeah. know there was that many. That I didn't many. either. Yeah. I'll have to go uh, back to it. I kind of liked it. I kind of like you, Chris. I watched a few episodes, got distracted with other things, got away from it. But I might have to go. Maybe I'll go back. I'm actually going to Las Vegas for business on Sunday. I leave on Sunday. So <laughs> probably download a bunch of episodes for the plane. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, you should, you should just land here uh -huh. on the way there. We're like halfway there. You can come <laughs> see the new bunker, you know, or they're, get, they're getting ready to do electrical tomorrow. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, speaking of new movies um well first of all obviously with the last of us going away I, I did see a trailer today that i thought looked really good um coming to apple tv it's called ghosted have you seen the uh, preview for that hmm. i have not watched the preview but i just heard about that show like yesterday uh, it looks really good it's got anna de almas in it uh and it's just it, it looks really good it's got chris hemsworth as well or uh chris, chris evans. evans chris evans yeah. Yeah. um so it looks really fun. That's definitely yeah. you should check out the trailer. I think it'll be a fun flick. Cool. Um, and speaking of flicks, um, this uh, was I don't know if you guys have seen these photos, but I thought this was pretty cool. They're obviously uh, the Joker. Yeah, um, is starting to be in production. So we got our first kind of look at that film. Um, and uh, what I thought was interesting is, you know, not only do we get Arthur Fleck kind of looking like Arthur Fleck, but there was a lot of scenes being filmed with him and a Joker uh, yeah. with the Joker chasing himself. So. Um, I, what do you guys think about the the photos you've seen? Are you does it pique your interest at all? Is it something that I, like I know not everybody loved that film. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember how you guys felt about it. I thought it was really cool. It creeped me out, but I thought it was a, a pretty good um, yeah. psychological thriller, um, kind of like with mental health. But what what do you guys think about the, the the next film coming out? Are you excited about it at all? That's kind of like what looks like what's going on in that scene. Like maybe he's seeing like visions of like what he did in the past, or like he's being haunted by his thoughts or something like that could be about right, so speculation people think it's gonna be like a three joker movie because it was there was actually like three of them i think running around that would be pretty cool i don't know what, what about you dan and jeff what do you guys think not enough there for me to form an opinion yeah i really? kind of feel the same way um but it, it's hard i like the joker movie um I don't. I don't know how I feel about the 
these Batman movies with no Batman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, like it's not a Batman movie. It, yeah, it's thing, it's not. Uh, it's not a Batman movie, and I don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is in it. I mean, yeah. so that's we have to be fair about that. But it's not. Yeah, yeah it's not. A, it's like characters. Gotham. Yeah. yeah, it's like Gotham TV show. It's like it had some ca- great characters, but it didn't yeah. have Batman. Yeah, I'm still fascinated by that movie. I mean, if you looked at that movie in a vacuum without knowing how it how it did at the box office, that's an art house movie. Oh, oh yeah, for that sure. Made, that makes two point three million dollars and disappears to yeah. HBO. Right. And somehow that movie made a billion dollars. And it, it's a testament to how popular that character is. Also, if you look at, I mean, there's no other character in Oscar history that has won more Academy Awards than the Joker. What, like three actors have won Best, best yeah. Academy Awards for that oh, role? Really? Wow. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, you're exactly right. I mean, really, if all they really did is just add some names, I mean, they dropped some names here and there and had, you know, Monarch Theater or whatever it was and Mask of Zorro, like, yeah. but if they, if it didn't have that, yeah, it would just be an art film, like you said. I mean, it's, yeah. it is pretty amazing that they just took this idea and added and made it into a, a, yep. a DC type film. Um, this one though is going to be, it's rumored and I still don't know if it's been confirmed, but it's been rumored obviously with the, uh, the addition of lady, lady Gaga, um, who we don't know, but we're all assuming it's Harley and it's, I'm assuming it's going to be Dr. Quinzel in the asylum, uh, type of situation and, and his, maybe his delusional infatuation with her. Um, cause again, the first film ever, it was kind of questionable whether the entire thing was this big dream, uh, cause mm-hmm. every scene had the same time on the clock and, you know, there's just all these little Easter eggs. Um, and so I could see that being that. And then whenever he thinks of her, it, it turns into this musical. And that was the other thing is like, people are like, Oh, what kind of crap is this? It's a musical. I'm not going to go see it. Um, but I don't think it's going to be, s- I don't think it's squarely a musical. I think though there's going to be weird elements, you know, to it. Um, I'm I so excited. Think- I think it'll be fun. I don't think there's anything out of character about the world from the Joker's point of view being a musical. Right. He's nuts. He's nuts. I think it's perfectly in line with that character. Yeah. And I think it'll be something different uh, for sure. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this one will, uh, there was just so much buzz with the first one. And I think it was because I don't know. It's just with the, I don't know if like there was, you know, shootings and things like that at the time that there was just a lot of like people were nervous about it um you know real on edge about the film and when you look at it it's really not that bad but it's um compared to some of the other shoot 'em up type movies um right. you know um so it'll be interesting it'll be interesting to see how yep. well it does but i i'm excited to see it i hope it's i hope it's good anyway i, I just thought it was cool to, to start seeing some actual you know, real photos of filming. I always enjoy those. And I know some people don't want to be spoiled. So I apologize if I spoil anything. Uh, but uh, if you're, if you're in any, if you're any group at all on Facebook, you're probably already spoiled anyway. So yep. um, that's that. Um, all right. So again, welcome everybody. We've got 172 people watching. Thank you guys so very much for being here. Um, if we get to 250 tonight, I'm live pre-ordering. So just be, be prepared. Uh, so yeah, 250. I'm hoping we get there. So we'll see. Live uh, what? Um, so it actually oh, might be two things. Huh? Uh, I have two things in my cart. I've got the 89 Batman from Prime One and also Vamprilla. Oh, okay. um, and the, the, the crazy thing is, I think I'm going to order Vamprilla before I order Batman 89, which is insane. I stood next to you while you were looking at that at San Diego and you very clearly loved it. I did. I thought it was really awesome. And again, to me, even though it is Vamprilla, I still think in my mind when I would look at it, I'd be like, okay, I could justify her as being Talia. Because again, we're never going to get a Talia, at least I don't think. Um, so I don't know. I get to see her. I think she would fit in with the, with the other characters. Do you guys think? I don't know. I'm just trying to justify here. I don't want to, do you think she'd be okay if I had her on a shelf next to other, another Batman villain? Do you guys think it'd be okay? Trying to think I, who next to. I you must have read different issues with Talia than I did. <laughs> you don't like her. Oh, I really like Talia, but I don't see Talia when I look at that Vampirella. I'm tr- well, that's the thing is I'm just trying to like 
<laughs> no, I get it. I'm, I'm trying to like put a square in a round hole here. Okay. Well, you're, yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, I just don't, you know, me and my evolution as a collector, I don't feel like a piece has to go with the rest of your collection right now. Right. So I think you'd be fine. Totally. But see, my but my collection's so different though. Like I have just Batman. And so if I do add one non-Batman thing, to me it's gonna stand out like a sore thumb. But I do think that being a, a third scale, and I have so many other third scales, I think that she will fit in. Or um, it'll be the beginning of you getting a few other pieces that might not fall into the Batman category. It could be that that's what scares me though. <laughs> yeah. That's what because then I then I break my rules. This is like right. rules are made to be broken, man. I know. I know. Life's short, right? I'm looking at Red Sonya right now. I never thought I'd buy that. I'm looking at Rebel Terminator right now. Didn't think I'd buy that. And man, the ones that you've got recently are all awesome and they're hard to find. I love them. If yeah. I were to sell my collection, they'd be some of the last ones to go. I'm, I really am enjoying them more than a lot of my other pieces. That's awesome. And Dan, are you still looking for that, that Rebel? I am. You know, the price, the one that's on eBay, and I believe it's still there, it's just so much money. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, if it was a few hundred dollars less than that, it wouldn't, I, I think I'd be likely to tip. I, that's one that I would really like to have. You know, it's just one of those statues that I think we all bump into them from time to time, where even though it's not in my kind of core, down the core collecting zone for Batman, I just love that piece when it came out. It's just so appealing, but yeah. And sixteen hundred bucks is like oh yikes! You know, it's just too big what of a. Was, what was the ES on that? Um, I don't remember. It had to be small because you don't you don't ever see her ever. I, I don't even see her in people's collections. Very rarely. It's it true. wasn't. I don't think it was tiny. Um. Let's see. But you never see like like you never see her for sale. It's pretty rare. Here we go. Yeah, obviously at that price point. Uh great. It was a thousand total. Wow. 350 of the X, 650 of the collector's edition. I mean, that's quite a oh, few yeah. out there. I know. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And I everybody, everybody's saying I should change my name to Bat Statue Collector. <laughs> <laughs> to justify Vamprilla. I mean that would that would work. And I oh, that's now I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Delaney's brain because I think somebody like found this obscure comic where Vamprilla and Batman were together somehow. Catwoman, I think. Was not one with Catwoman? I feel like it maybe it was, but it was like maybe in the nineties, like early nineties, maybe. Um I remember they were, they were looking for me. They're like, okay, now you can justify because it wasn't a Batman comic. Oh, or, you right. know, um so that might be my one string that I hold on to. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. But I love it is a beautiful statue. Uh, it just went up. It got me thinking again because it just went up uh, at Sideshow. Um, I still think I would order from Prime One though because uh, Sideshow's marked it up quite a bit um, compared to what you can get direct from Prime One. Um, I wouldn't necessarily. The bonus on that is the little nameplate. I don't necessarily need that. I think right. it's another like 120 bucks more for that. Yeah, it's Catwoman. I just found it. It was a Catwoman episode, huh? Issue? Uh, yeah, issue. I'll, I'll send it to you. Through the okay. Chat you oh, it's, it's Jim Dallin, too. Share it. Oh, nice. Well, okay. you can't beat that. That, that, that. that shouldn't surprise me that he drew her then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, while Eric is doing that, do uh, you guys want to go on to our first topic? Sure. Let's All do right. It. So here's topic number one is, what the hell is going on with the ES and Sideshow? Oh God! Poison Ivy announced at two hundred and fifty. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's go back just a little bit. So uh, the Poison Ivy went up for pre-order. Um, I don't know what two weeks ago, maybe three. not maybe three weeks ago. Okay, three Valentine's weeks ago. Day. Okay. Um, and so this was something that, and again, I don't know if I'm part of the reason why it was released. I oh, I don't know because there was like a whoopser on the website, and I did a video about it. Um, and so then all of a sudden, bam, it's now up for pre-order, which was interesting. Um, so, you know, I don't know if that kind of forced the issue or not. I know it drummed up a lot of interest. Obviously, there was a lot of people that, that viewed that video. Um, and so all of a sudden, lo and behold, boom, here we have a premium format. Uh, I loved it 
I thought it was beautiful. I know Dan, you ordered one. Uh, I ordered one the first day, um, which I don't always do anymore. I mean, you know, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, well, usually you can kind of sit and wait on things. Not this time. Um, so the weird thing about it was um, some collectors brought it to my attention um, that it had this thing on the website that said ex uh, it was an exclusive, which were like, well, there's no exclusive to it. Usually they have the little exclusive banner. Um, but what we later found out was it obviously was just exclusive to Sideshow itself, uh, where other retailers weren't going to be selling it. And then it was another thing that somebody sent me that had a graphic on it that said limited time only. Right. Or something, yep. something like that. Something to that effect. Something to that effect. And we thought, OK, well, that's really strange because usually, you know, you can pre-order it for two more years and, be, you know, be fine. And it's like it's very strange, the limited time only thing. Well, what drummed up all the interest this week was this graphic right here. And this says Sideshow Edition Size Announcement, only 250 worldwide. Yep. Um, at first, uh, I think maybe Eric or somebody in our private chat messaged this uh, image, um, got it in an email. Um, I checked my email. I did not see a thing. Um, and I, apparently there were, when people were talking about it in Facebook, not very many people had it. There was only a few people that actually got this email saying that there was an ES of 250 worldwide. Um, I later in the day got one. Did you guys get one? No, I never got one. No. Okay. I'm, I'm the one that posted it. I got it. Okay. Dan did. Okay. Sorry. I think when it first went out, I had it early in the day, like that morning. So okay. someone had a theory. Had, did you two guys subscribe to get notifications about her? Yeah, I probably. So I didn't, maybe that's why. They, so they maybe I, I can't no. remember for, for sure if I did. I RSVP'd. So when they posted the RSVP, I did. Okay. So I bet, I bet I probably did too. And maybe that would make sense then why we got the email. I, but I didn't get it to like four or five in the afternoon. Long after it sold out. <laughs> right. Wait listed, I should yeah. say. So well, you're getting ahead of us, Jeff. Come on. No, no we're, we're trying to build up the excitement here. And so anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, so anyway, uh, we this, you know, obviously this created a big, big buzz. Um, the fact that only 250 were going to be made. Um, this is incredibly different than anything we've ever seen uh, from Sideshow, I think ever, where usually something goes for pre-order and usually it says ES to be announced in the future. Yep. Um, and usually I think that's based on sales. Like it's like, they're trying to see how many they can sell at that point. They will determine how many they're going to set for the ES. Um, they will still take pre-orders usually, um, until it's completely sold out or even, even after it's, you know, waitlisted, they'll I mean, they'll still take orders. Um, but this time there was 250, obviously uh, well, a yeah. lot of FOMO sent well, for, in. For three weeks though, it did say that for three weeks, it did say TBD. Right, right, it, exactly. Um, so three weeks later, which is again very, very rare. Uh, sometimes the uh, companies will announce the ES right when it goes up for pre-order. Uh, Sideshow they don't typically do that. I, I, they may have done it before. They did, um, but it's rare. And so three weeks later, we get an ES of two hundred and fifty. And of course, because of that, the internet goes crazy, and it is now waitlisted. It waitlisted that afternoon. Um, which we were surprised it wasn't sold out at that point already because 250 of, of a major character like this, Poison Ivy, um, which is just crazy. Then later the day, we got this. Uh, this was a post on Sideshow's Instagram, and I have blown it up a little bit so you guys can read it here a little bit better. It says, uh, growing, growing, gone. I think it was, I don't, I'm assuming it's a plant joke. Uh, and the limited edition Poison Ivy premium format figure of just 250 pieces has sold out. Head to our website now to join the wait list. Be on the lookout for even more low edition size collectibles from Sideshow in the future. Okay. So let's dive into this. Like, what is going on? We had a great uh, conversation in our uh, private chat uh, that afternoon. Um, clearly, this is a, a, a major change in business practices, potentially for them. Um, what do you guys think is going on? What do you guys think about this, uh, this three week later, 250 ES on a major character? Well, let, let me add a few more things to your uh, how, it, how it all went down. Yes, please, please. Um, the SciShow website didn't show the edition size of 250 until like four o'clock my time. So six o'clock your time, Chris, and seven o'clock your time, 
you know, for you two guys, it never showed a 250 edition size while it was still available, ever. That's true. That's my biggest problem. Wow, that that's before they announced it anywhere else, it should have been on their website because some people didn't get the e- most people didn't get the email. Right. Yeah. Some people don't have Instagram or follow Instagram, whatever. It was on but everyone has access to their website. So yeah. it should be on their website. That's where they're selling the darn thing. That's where it should have been first. Also, we didn't get any of the reminders that we normally get, like um, low stock remaining. That never happened. Almost sold out. Never happened. It went straight from TBD to, to waitlisted. In my mind, that should never happen. Those two words, TBD and waitlist, should never exist on the same page. Yep. If it's waitlisted, there has to be an addition size. Just basic logic. So I think in that respect, they screwed up. And I hope that they don't do that again. If they want to do a three-week pre-order, awesome. Go for it. But tell us you're doing that. Yeah, I think that's a a, a great point because, again, there's – I mean, we are on social media a lot, but there's a lot of people that are not. And it's – you know, it's it it shouldn't benefit one collector over the other. I mean, everybody should have a fair shot at it. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like – it's just crazy. Like, what do you, what do you guys think is going on with this? I mean, why would they want to, I mean, I think the question most people would say like, why would, why wouldn't they leave it open? I mean, if they, they could sell another 500 of these or whatever and make a lot more money. Like, what do you think? I mean, we've been talking a lot about why strange business practices over the last couple of months. Like what is, what, what, what do you think is going on here, Dan? Um, honestly, I've been saying this for a while now. Um, When XM started to trickle in with some low ES, they've been doing it for a while too, but it seems more and more low ES uh, statues. And then we've seen Prime 1 do it a few times and then a little more and a little more. I, my theory is that they've figured out how to hit their margin targets because it's all about profitability. If these things don't have a certain level of profit, they don't get done, period, end of story, right? And profits measured in a whole bunch of different ways. And I think they're able to now, for whether it's through different business arrangements and relationships with the factories, they've, you know, taken what they used to spread for production over five factories. Now they're just one. So they're able to give them more. Whatever the business change they've made, I think they've figured out how to be profitable with a low ES run, which I think is critical because, all the other economic environmental factors around the economy and shipping costs and all those other things, all that does is cause statues to build up in their warehouses. And that's where it, they, they, every day that statue sits, the profit margin on that statue goes down every single day. And at a certain point, now you've crossed a line where it wasn't worth it for them to make that statue in the first place. I'm, I, I completely believe they've figured that out. That's I was going to ask you. It's like, to me, I was just going to say, is it a warehouse thing? Because we've seen these massive sales. We've seen this, yeah. you know, it's like if they had, let's say they had an ES of 4,000 or something crazy yeah. and they sold a thousand so far, which is great. Yeah. It's making profit, but then they have all these ones in their warehouse and then they have to discount them and discount them and discount them and free shipping and blah, blah, blah in order to get them out of the warehouse. Do you think it simply is that it's just, we can we know that we can move this amount amount x but it's still like 250 is really low like you would think like okay well let's let's do an es of 500 you would still think that they would be able to move that but yeah how do you think how do you think they come up with the number that i'm not sure but remember if they commit right for to a factory to make a thousand statues right they're paying so much per statue right? For a certain level of finish and all all the other piece, all the other aspects that go into it. They have to pay that regardless of whether or not they sell those statues. So if they have a thousand made, they get whatever, 30% of them are pre-ordered, maybe 50% are pre-ordered, right? The other 50% go into a warehouse and trickle out the door and sell, you know, slowly. The think about that the margin on those first 500 goes down 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 and then what happens when you're sitting on 80 of these things like they don't all sell out 
Right. So I, I, I still have, I have two problems. <laughs> okay. Hit us, hit us with it. The first is, and I, we said, I talked about this yesterday. Uh, XM can do that because they're charging 50% more for a quarter scale statue. Right. That make, that allows them to have a lower addition size. And the other problem I have is that everything you, you say might be true, Dan, but that does not explain why they didn't just come out and say, we're doing this for three weeks. You got three weeks and then we're done. It's made to order. Yeah. That would have given everybody the, the window of opportunity that they, they need that, that knowledge to know I got to order it by this date or I'm screwed. And they didn't do that. There, somewhere along the line, there's either a screw up or they decided to do this made to order thing. And based on history, like I said yesterday, that last Poison Ivy, they, they sold 2,300 of them. Which is crazy. Think of the difference, 2,300 yeah. to 250. And now we know that in the first three weeks of sales on this statue, they didn't hit 250 until they declared there's only going to be 250. And everybody went, oh, my God, and FOMO struck, and everybody went and ordered it. What is it about this piece, or was it about our hobby as a whole, that they can't, because there's there was very few complaints about this statue. Beautiful piece. People I mean, yeah, really I, don't, I didn't hear any, I mean, other than and maybe some seam issues with the hair. The other thing they, negative they, I saw. I don't know if we mentioned yet, but the other thing just really quick is they made it an exclusive to where they didn't even make it available to other retailers to get in on that and make, you know, raise the, the sales on it. And I think that's going to be the clue in the future. Any piece that says Sideshow exclusive, you better order at day one because who knows when they're going to end the ordering. I mean, because that, that tells me that they knew right ahead. I mean, right away that they were going to be doing this really low run. Yeah. But I don't it's, know. Where, where, what do you feel about what do you feel about all this, Eric? Like, where do you see? Like, well, I have my crazy TV. conspiracy theory. I don't know if you want me to go into that, but I, <laughs> I, I think it's a combination of what Dan was saying and what Jeff was saying. I think we're in hard times right now, like a little bit of a recession and people aren't buying like they used to. And at the same time, like Dan said, I think they just want to move stock really quick, not have to worry about it sitting in warehouses and offer it up on seconds and, you know, try to get rid of it and have to deal with retailers and shipping and this, this and that. They can just move it really quick, make their money on it. I mean, it is like an $800 statue, so it is a little bit pricey compared to previous PFs. Uh, maybe like Mr. I think Mr. Freeze was like 800 or 820 Um. You want me going to my crazy conspiracy theory? Sure, go for it. Uh, I think it's an older piece that was been sitting around based on the base. The base kind of matches up with the pogo stick Joker. And it makes me wonder if this was I like, I think Sideshow produces at least starts production on statues before we even know about it, before they even announce it, maybe say like a month ahead. Uh, this way they get an early jump on it. And this way they can get the first batch out to customers. Um, if you go back like a year or two ago, we had the whole pandem uh, pandemic and it makes me wonder if that's what they were in the middle of doing. They had started maybe an early first batch at the factory. The factory got shut down, factory caught on fire. Who knows? Something happened to the project. It got terminated. And for whatever reason, they never picked it back up when everything reopened. And they had 250, 300 of these sitting around in a warehouse somewhere and didn't know what to do with it and said, let's make it some melee quick you know advertise you know, whatever they want to call it. like it's a quick yeah. uh you know it's going to only you know a bit going to be available for a certain amount of time to order that's my theory i mean i think it's i mean a lot it's of people crazy saying, but you never know well a lot of people are saying genius theory or good theory um it's like you know we we have seen that with like i know xm with the bat bike like they went into production really fast and it came out way early yeah um and we're seeing a lot of statues here lately you guys have noticed like my punchline way way early this joker is going to come way way early um and so we, I, I do think it is a, a factory issue where if maybe if less is being made the factories are clearly wanting to stay busy um so they're you know i just feel like it has to i, I think it has a lot to do with the way the factory is being used um I don't know. It's just, it's just really interesting, but there are a lot of good theories obviously yeah. of what's going on, but it does. There's, there's just so much with this piece that doesn't add up. And that's, that's the weird thing about it. Um, like everything with, with the, the email, like people not getting the emails, like Jeff said, like, like certain people didn't know about it. It's like, everything just doesn't make sense with what they're doing with this. Do you feel like, do you feel like this is going to be a new model going forward? I mean, do you feel like this is going to be something that they do 
This isn't the first time they've done this. They did this with Thanos, and when they did it with Thanos, they did it on, like Jeff said, on the website. They let everybody know the ES was going to be 500 for the X, 1,000 for the regular, whatever it was, and the thing sold out in five minutes. Yeah. But from day one, they said. So so they know how to do it. Why didn't they do it this time with Ivy? You know, it's like, what the hell is going on? Um, I think that if, if, if Sideshow knew that they were going to be doing this, and especially if they're going to be doing it further down the road, like, why not do like this big, exciting rollout about, because, you know, we, you know, we, we've been talking. What? I can tell you that. They suck at marketing. Well, like, they do. They're horrible at it. They really are. I'm sorry. They are. Yeah. Well, you're, I mean, it, it's, it's been clear the last couple of years. It's just been a lot of the decisions have been really odd. Um, but it's like, we, we've talked a lot about on the channel where, you know, in the old days, we used to encourage people to pre order. Um, but in the last couple of years, we've said, hey, don't pre-order anymore. Wait till stuff comes in stock. Um, usually it's not going to sell out unless there's that rare piece like Batman Who Laughs from Prime 1 or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we've been saying. Um, and so then they get stuff in stock and they try to sell that. A lot of times it sits there as well. So do you think this is a way to be like to completely flip it up on its head and get people to order pre-order again like they used to back in the old days you think that is what the strategy is here well i mean keep in mind that the reason youtubers like you say have been telling people to wait to order before you see a production piece or whatever or when it's in hand is because sideshow has taken measures to encourage that you know if you're gonna have sideshow seconds you know if you're gonna everything that they've done if you're gonna if you're going to eliminate exclusives Right. All these moves encourage people to yep. wait. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. So it's I don't, so I, I don't I don't blame YouTubers because they're reacting to what Sideshow's doing, how they're operating their business. I, yep. It's it's so frustrating. And the, the thing that's interesting is Sideshow never cancels pieces. Right. XM does. Yeah. Prime One does. Yeah. So if they get really, really bad numbers, they just cancel it. Sideshow doesn't. So I'm really curious what the evolution of this Poison Ivy story is. And it it really is shocking to me that they didn't sell 250 until they announced the addition size. That's this is, crazy. This is why the suck at marketing comment, honestly, because they, you know, the 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 the, the sideshow seconds, the daily deals and the other deals, those are all those are marketing tactics. Sure right? they are. Those are marketing tactics to promote and move product. Um, mm-hmm. and prioritize moving certain product. Sure. To then come full swing this other direction, that's what I mean by suck at marketing. It's like, wait a minute, you're, you're pushing and pulling your collecting community all over the right. place. Your customers, you know, it's just not, I don't know. I just don't understand that number. Like why 250? Like XM and Prime One barely goes that low. It makes me like, if, I, if we don't see a variant of this and like in a green skin, I'm really going to, speculate even more like what's going on with this piece because i mean it, it, it's been a trend though like we just saw that harley quinn the margot robbie harley quinn es uh, announced the joker from daniel bell was announced yeah, both was of them too. not very big es's which was shocking to me especially on the, the joker what was the harley es <sighs> harley is five and joker is six 500 on an on a harley piece. on a harley low wow yeah. Even on so Joker I don't know well. if I don't know if announcing those ESs may have like kind of started that talk at Sideshow and said, hey, let's maybe do something different here. I, I, again, I just don't know. But like you said, the, the push and pull of the customer has been very interesting, uh, to say the least. And again, it will be really interesting to see in the future of kind of if this is the new way um, or because I, I, I can't see them living in both worlds. I can't see right. them continuing to say, hey, look, look at us over here with all these discounts. Which again, it's never been better to buy, and it's never been better to wait because, why, again, why would you pre-order? Um, but to that's the way we have been—we have been conditioned to do that. I don't think they'll do it with every release, though. They still have large ESs. I mean, the the new Psylocke is two thousand. You know, the um, did you notice the Dark Knight waitlisted today? The on bike? No, the Lightning Bolt. Oh, did it? Yeah, and that's an ES of twenty five hundred. So I think that I think they'll use it sparingly would be my guess. But, but like, what's, what's it going to like, like how, what, what's the rhyme or reason? Like, I mean, 
<laughs> you would think. <laughs> mystery. Uh, okay, so hold on. Joker. I want to get back to this. I got a super. Going back to Joker sure. real quick. Was Joker an exclusive? Like where it's only sold at Sideshow? No. Nope. nope. So why the nope. hell did they do it with Ivy? And it's that's so what. Weird. That's again. We just don't know. Uh, Ryan E with ten dollars super chat. The big factor on why people weren't ordering discounts, uh, like Jeff said, uh, sideshow collectibles set itself up and encouraged people not to pre-order because folks were fine waiting for a deal. Feel bad, folks, for wanting this piece. Mm -hmm. um, again, uh, it would be it would be great. Thank you for the super chat, by the way, Ryan. Thank you again. All of that goes into the bat bunker, so thank you very much. I also want to thank two hundred and seventy five people oh, watching right now. That means I got to pre-order something tonight, guys. <laughs> thank you for being here. Live pre-order coming up. Um, so I do like, like Jeff said earlier, it's like, I feel bad for the collectors that didn't have an opportunity on the website to know, um, if you didn't get that email. So it's just, I don't know. It's crazy. Now, here's my other thing that I wanted to ask and, and talk about. So do you think that something like this, if, okay, if, if a character like Ivy, they're only going to make 250, they know exactly how much they're going to make. Cause they know they're going to sell out. Do you think that they will start then making some of those other characters that people have been wanting like Two Face or Clayface or Man Bat or whatever, do you think that's more likely to happen now? Because before they would like, oh, an ES of 250, we'll never make that character. Well, or do you think now, if that's what that, that's their new business model for whatever rhyme or reason, do you think we're more likely to get those characters, or do you think now we're even more less likely to get the characters? Well, but the question is, are they making money? Or I mean, hopefully they're making money. Are they going to make money off of that 250 edition size? No. Uh, I can't imagine much because I know I know for a fact that these companies pay a lot of money up front for the prototype. Because I don't okay, see them pay... doing with other characters if that's the case. Yeah. And, that's and that's that's the thing is like I don't understand like I don't understand how they make money on an eight hundred dollar poison ivy that's two hundred and fifty made. Surely, I mean they're going to make some. I mean it is pricey. I mean, the but usual. I think I think at this point maybe if if sales are that bad, then maybe something's better than nothing. I mean, we always said the, the the lower the edition size, the higher the price to make up for the cost. So, I mean, I don't know. Do so you guys think that's kind of expensive, like eight hundred for a PF? I mean, it's, it's a little. Well, it's, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's eight hundred shipped. When it's six ninety. Yeah. yeah. The price is six ninety. Uh, yeah. Right. So that's that's right in with what they've been doing with PFs lately. Right. Oh, okay. Um, but it's not. Uh, it's not a fourteen hundred dollar XM. No. Yeah. All right. It's not. And so again, that's what XM does. Like they're, I mean, they, they up the cost a little bit. Their, their packaging's a little heavier. So shipping sometimes a little bit more. Um, but people, you know, they, they'll pay for that quality. They'll pay for it. Um, especially if it's a low ES. Um, a lot of the samurai pieces are pretty low ESs on some of them. Um, so to answer I, your question though, I don't think it's more likely we're going to get those characters because of what happened here. I think it's less likely. I, I don't think there's any good news about sideshow selling less than 250 poison ivies in three weeks. That's that's bad. That does not herald well for I agree. Play. Right. And that, I agree. I think I, I, I for me it's wishful thinking. I'm thinking, well, you know, if that if they're happy making that much money mm -hmm. on a character, well then they would be happy making this much money on that other character. Because again I don't think they're happy. Well they they might I don't think this it, it was their, it was their decision to do it though like it's yeah they could have kept it, it open it's like, it's like it was done to them they don't cancel stuff i think that they opened up that pre-order three weeks ago thinking they were going to get get numbers like they got with the last iv which well, was very say, high. Like, like why they close it so early like i said like they must have really seen like super low numbers coming into where they maybe thought like wow this is yeah. really not selling like well know. again it losses. did not sell 350 in three weeks I mean, 250. It did not sell 250 in three weeks, yeah. yeah, which is shocking. And if it had sold 200, it should have gone to low stock remaining. Correct. So they probably didn't even sell 200 yeah. until yesterday. Well, Isn't why why give us the low stock warning? They even let us know the addition size or anything else coming I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we've talked before about how important communication is. Um, and hopefully this is, a, this is a learning opportunity to say, Hey, this is, you know, the first time we've ever done it, you know, next time maybe do it a little bit differently, but it would still be nice to kind of know, <laughs> I can't just like, what the hell's going on? Like what, what, oh, what is going on? Back. They kind oh, of did it with that. It, it wasn't like a three week period, but they did do it with Thanos over one but weren't day. they more upfront about it? Like, didn't yeah, they, they like, just literally like, said what's like, going on? Yeah. They said, oh, here's we the not, number and that's it. Are we not 
believing the comment they made on Instagram about look forward to more low ES yes. tattoos from side. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I think, I think that they're going to do it. Did you recognize the person who posted that? No, I didn't see it. It was on There's Facebook a name too. Up there, but I've never seen it before. I don't know. It's on um, it's on Facebook too, on their official web, uh, you know, <clears throat> their uh, official name on Facebook. No, I mean, I believe they posted it. Oh, okay. But I don't believe that they're in, in any way happy with an addition size of two fifty. It just makes no sense, not at that price point. Hmm. Which makes me go back to thinking it goes to my. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but I think it from it's a piece from a few years ago that never got put out. And Eric, why why didn't? What is your idea about why they didn't put it out? Possibly something with the pandemic, where the factories got shut, and they like I said, I think they start. I think they start. They always know their statue sells. So I believe they start production before we even know about the pre-order period or anything like that announcement. And we yeah. know that and, we know statues like this have been made. We know like they do Batman statue. It's been in production or we in, know they in do the... batches. So, you know, maybe they do like a 500 batch <laughs> and then another 500 batch, whatever the addition size is. So they might have been doing an early batch and something happened at the factory where they closed down, caught fire. I think one time one of them caught on fire or something like that. And for whatever reason, it got scrapped and they never picked the project back up. I was just, 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 just going to we know that when there were statues being developed, you know, it, it was started years and years and years ago. So if if we if we're seeing this uh, you know this poison ivy, she she might have been made you know actually started being sculpted three years ago. Who knows? Right. Yeah. And that's you know that's very typical of all these things. Um, you know it it is a it is a process. They have to go through approvals and they have to sculpt this and then it has to go from this artist to this artist and um, you know just having different artists on the channel. We've learned about that process and it's it's really quite interesting. So I, I do believe this ivy's probably been around for a while. Um, it and does match it, up with the older Joker. I mean, that the base is exactly. That's the one thing that really tells me that you could be onto something there, Eric. So I, I looked, I looked into that a little bit. Yeah. The Joker one is the insignia for the Gotham courthouse. Okay. And this one is for the police station. So in some ways they're similar, but in some ways they're different. Mm -hmm. this, but the, they were they were clearly going with the theme uh, with yeah, those. Do they look similar? Like if you were to put them next to each other, do they look it's, like they should? Yeah, be? it's the same coin. It's that copper bronze, like looks like a coin. Whatever you know, the, the insignia. So I mean, you might be onto something. Maybe it's it, that's the, exactly what happened with this one. The problem I have with that theory is that they had so many dismal events in the last six months of last year where they could have thrown that up if they had them sitting in a warehouse. Yeah, and people yeah. would have appreciated a new premium format at a time where we weren't getting much at all. Again. Crazy. Marketing. <laughs> I, I vote. Know. I vote Dan Default to take over head of marketing for Sideshow. I will. What do you? Would you take the job, Dan? Premium formats for everybody. That's yeah. right. You get a premium format. And you get a premium format. And you get a premium format. <laughs> so we're kind of re not to pull the curtains, but we're kind of going through what we were going through in our chat, and we were arguing with each other back and forth. And then <laughs> Jeff said that to me, and I said, "All right, so now I'm going to throw out another crazy conspiracy." We all know a lot of these things went off the cargo ship into the water. So I said, all right, so Jeff, <laughs> it's possible they were scuba diving for these things <laughs> for the past year trying to find them. And they just found them and that made her for pre-order. <laughs> yeah. The factory before the fire made 250 total and they all were on the bottom of the ocean. They've all scuba dived them all out. They are all painting them as we speak. <laughs> Never it's the well, greatest statue story of all time. Well, Jose Rios makes a good point in the chat. He says Sideshow couldn't sell more than 250 in three weeks, but Prime One sold 500 poison ivies at 1350 in two weeks. What's going on? It's a good point. That is a good 500 point. of that variant sold out in two weeks. It is a good point. Do you think that? Well, do you think that it could be a thing where? That 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 Ivy statue was released first. That's where people's money went. Could be. It could sure. be. That's a. Great I mean, point. my money did. I already own this freaking statue, and I bought the new one. <laughs> did, the, did that? Did the lettuce Ivy go for pre-order yet? If she is not. But it would be really interesting to see how she sells if it went up for pre-order this week. And I guarantee that Prime One's going to wait a little bit now. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. There's yeah. so many like Ivy's out there right now. To and that's where from. that's where Prime One shot themselves in the foot. If you remember with the uh, the Arkham City piece, um, although it said it was selling well, according to uh, Mr. J. Um, and th that their excuse was the same thing. They said they couldn't find a factory to produce it at the right, right. price or something like that. Right. 
Yep. But they released her at the same time as the as the Hush, which was a mistake. So people were like comparing the two and be like, well, the Hush is way better, so I'm not going to order that one. And we all know how Dan felt about her foot. Very strongly. Very strongly. <laughs> well, <laughs> Very well, strongly well, about well, that big well, foot. Well. Uh, but yeah, I think I think Prime One's got to be careful here and say, hey, now the, the, to be fair, one is one third and one is a quarter scale. But it would be interesting to see if you release that quarter scale with Sideshow's quarter scale the same week because they are both. No, the she's green, right? She's a green. The lettuce one's green. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a green ivy. So I don't Uh, know. Chris Devin in the chat made a good point. He said the easy answer is that Prime One sold out to distributors while Sideshow is exclusive to the site. That's a good point. If they include, you know, the batches that they're moving to distributors, of which I think they have a lot. You know, if they sold half to distribution and that wouldn't surprise me. So why did Sideshow make this an exclusive to them? Great what was that all about? Great question. It was in the ocean. Just... <laughs> it's the ocean theory. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's just, again, it's just, yeah. it boggles the mind a little bit. Again, I don't know. I just wish mm-hmm. the companies would talk to us sometimes so we don't have to speculate so much. It's like, you know, but hey, it makes great content here on Rogue's yeah. Gallery Live. Well, Let's see if they do it again like they said they were. Yeah. I just can't imagine Amy coming out and saying, we screwed up. This is what <laughs> happened. That's just not going to happen. It's not yeah. going to happen. Um, but I don't know. It's just very strange. And I think like Eric just said, it's going to be telling if they, you know, with the, with the future releases, it's going to be telling whether this is going to be kind of the new business model to drum up excitement and, and get people to pre-order again. But I think, I think if people are going to want to pre-order again, they're going to have to still kind of trim some of the discount stuff out, which sucks because we're, that's been great. I don't know. I just feel like they're they're trying to right the ship a little bit, but <laughs> I think there's still holes in the ship. Or, if, if, if they're or doing, go ahead. Yeah, if you're always good with like the volume of statues from Sideshow, it seems like that for some reason there's this pervasive opinion that Sideshow doesn't make as much as they used to. And then Jeff chimes in and says, "Yeah, but what about this, 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 this?" And you're like, "Oh shit, that's right." So. I, I think your your point about them not being happy with 250, I, I've just been sitting here thinking about that. That's a really good point because even if the margin's good on the statue, that's just not enough absolute dollars, right? It's not, you know, to make, say they make $100 on a statue times 250, that's just not interesting from a business standpoint, you know, and there's a yeah. point that that's not worth the risk. So do you, I could see it maybe as a test, best case scenario, but more likely one of Eric's conspiracy theories. But well, there's is is sideshow in your opinion, Jeff? Are they producing at a volume that's consistent, or has it been decreasing, increasing? What do you think? Well, yeah, you make guys remember I did that video earlier yeah. in the year. Yeah, people think that they didn't didn't put out much last year, but they put out thirty one premium formats. That's a that's lot. kind of a lot. That's a you lot. Know? I mean, yeah. Legendary Beast probably put out. Two, one third scales or something. You know, yeah. one is a lot, and so I'm not sure. You know, this year with they've only done it before so far. Is that about right? So they might be a little bit slower so far this year. Maybe they'll pick up in convention season. That'd be my guess. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard to tell. But they put out the the thing is the stuff they've put out so far this year has been pretty darn good. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. that Iron Spider is really cool. The Batman yep. on bike, I like quite a bit. You know, there's been yep. some good pieces coming out from Sideshow. Yeah, I mean, they, they continue to put out great quality statues. Uh, again, one of one of my newest ones from them is that Batman Who Laughs, which I absolutely love. Yeah. Um, so it's not a question of quality. It's not a question of any of that. Yep. To me, it's more of a question of the economy. Uh, and, you know, just people are not necessarily buying or... They're being incredibly, incredibly choosy. Um, whether they're going to spend sixteen hundred dollars on a Hush Poison Ivy, which was a sought-after piece anyway, mm-hmm. so that could have also helped with those sales. And like somebody mentioned earlier, uh, they they announced the ES from the pre-order date, so people yeah. felt like they had to buy. I think Sideshow just needs to tell us the rules. Even if the rule is no rules, we're not going to tell you when this is going to wait list. Tell us that 
and then we'll know we got to order day one. Either that or announce the addition size right away or do something so that people don't get screwed because they are used to the rules as they've been for years and years and years. I agree. And that's, that's why, again, I think that it would have been so cool to have like a big rollout to say, hey, this yeah. year, 12 days of Sideshow, which they didn't do. Yeah. Hey, guys, guess what? We're going to do a new model this year where occasionally certain pieces, we're going to have very, very limited. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. It's going to drum up excitement in the community. Yeah. People are going to really want these exclusive pieces. If you're a collector that wants a low ES, man, this is going to be the year for you. I mean, do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Drum it up. Make it exciting. But instead, you know, if you create ill will, that's not a very good start. Although they sold out, so what do they care? But because they're not going to make much yeah, money. It's not going to make much money, though. Like, they, they, I, I, I mean, I, I doesn't like, make like sense. Dan's point earlier. Like, hundred. Like, if you let's say you made a hundred dollars per statue, that's not that's not a very big dent. Not a lot of money. I mean, surely they make way more than that. At least I hope. Well, but when you think about all of their costs, yeah. Exactly. Of, Containers, yeah. factory, shipping, painters, everything. just everything. Payroll. Payroll. Yep. Imagine what they spend at San Diego. It must be insane. The amount oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah. And <laughs> I would imagine they need some home runs in their schedule of statues, right? They must count on, they've got to count on certain ones. Like Jeff, you said Psylocke is what, 2,500 pieces? 2000 for Psylocke, 2500 for uh, Dark Knight. For Dark Knight. So I got to imagine Dark Knight's probably a home run, right? Because that's got be. enough volume that if they are making some money on each one, they're doing that's well. Point. Yeah, so. Well, ask, with those Vader's like 9500 Can I ask another question? Yeah, those are sitting in us. Yeah. <laughs> and and that, that uh, Ahsoka Tano, not the one that just came out, but the one based on Clone oh, Wars? Yeah. There's a there's a huge number of that too. Okay, let me ask a question. Um, it just came to me. Okay. Two fifty for Poison Ivy, a big character, well known character, a female character that's barely clothed, which usually does pretty well. Could this particular two fifty be a result of, hey guys, we're tired of the same damn characters? To the point where they're going to lose you mean a, customer, <laughs> a customer reaction. You mean customer reaction? Uh, I'm like, okay, I've got an original poison ivy. I've got yeah. their new poison ivy that's green that came out a couple of years ago. Not everybody yeah. liked her. They thought she was kind of masculine. I love it. Yeah. Um, you know, just very fit. Uh, we've got selections like from Tweeterhead. I mean, there's been a lot of poison ivies out there. That's true. Um, do you think it's like okay? We've been asking for other characters. We're just not going to buy this poison ivy because we already have her. Yeah, it's a possibility. It's a Certainly, possibility. I'm just saying, like, I found when you compound that with your point, Chris, a few minutes ago about point about Prime One's, you know, uh, flesh colored one coming out, those two factors together could definitely cause that. Yeah, it's possible. It, even the Prime One, I thought, took a while to sell out at 500. I thought that would go right away when they released that, uh, you know, the, the regular skin version of it. It's a lot of money. It was two weeks. Just took two weeks. But again, like, let's say that they said, okay, hey, we're going to do a clay face and we're going to do 250 of them. I think that they would sell because they've never done one. I don't they think that they're going to, they're not going to sell a thousand of them. Yeah. No. I don't but think they, they would, do that though. I don't think they will either, but I, I feel like they could. But I don't know. To be honest, I think, I don't think they're happy with the Harley at, 500 and the joker at 600 they can't be yeah i mean that's got to be an expensive license yep I, those numbers are just too low yeah it's margot robbie yeah i mean incredibly popular so i don't know um again that's just it's just an interesting interesting yeah. topic that i think is going to take some time to develop um but i'm really glad that we had an opportunity to talk about it tonight um very, 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 very interesting. And hopefully in the future, we'll have more information and hopefully there'll be a little bit more forthcoming and let people know ahead of time uh, that it's coming just so people can, you know, get on it if they don't want to miss out and have that FOMO. Um, yep. I don't know. What do you guys think? Anything else you want to talk about with this topic or do you want to move on to topic two? 
The funny thing is, I don't even have a dog in the fight because I prefer the, the previous Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That could be why nobody it, bought this one. Yeah. Yeah. I just it find could, it really it, interesting that the, the, the events as they occurred was just so bizarre. Yep. It is. Okay, well, let's move on to a uh, topic two. This won't this won't take too long. Uh, it's kind of a just a personal topic for me, uh, but somebody brought it up. Um, topic two: best lighting solutions uh, for your collection. Um, if you guys have been following along my bat bunker videos, um, I have been you know to the point where actually there are electricians coming tomorrow um, and getting ready to do some of that work, and then drywall is going to go in, and then at that point they're going to do lighting. Um, I have decided to do smart bulbs up up on the ceiling uh so it'll be able to change any color pattern or whatever uh they're really thin discs and i know i've showed you guys um but the thing is uh, when it comes to the built-ins that i'm doing um i i, I want to show you some examples um so some of the examples of things that i've seen are things like this um where they have you know the individual lights uh kind of shining down um, this is an example. This is another example of kind of that same look. You kind of get the individual spotlights kind of shining down on things. Um, this was a, a, a collection that I thought was really cool. And that's kind of what inspired my built-ins to begin with was th this actual photo uh, to do something with my premium formats, um, kind of just like this. And, and I do like that look a lot. Um, then there's another collector that has something similar. Um, this is kind of in the dark uh, when there's no, you know, other lights in the room. This is more of, of it lit up with other lights in the room. Um, and then of course we have, again, something kind of like this. So you guys kind of get the idea. Um, my, uh, my electrician, when I was telling him about that, you know, we were, he was kind of talking about how it, how it lights things and how it can create shadows and things like that. So you get kind of like this, um, where at times you just kind of get silhouettes um, depending on the other lighting in the room. And I, I want mine to be lit up, you know, pretty solidly. So like he recommended something like this where we do, um, you know, kind of LED strips with diffusers. I don't really know much about that. Um, and so I'm kind of trying to start to do my homework here with this stuff. Um, but I just wanted to pick your brain. I know we talked a little bit about it in our, in our private chat, but like something like this versus something like, um, like this, what do you guys think is the best way for me to go? Um, I, again, I like both looks, but I'm just, I'm just not sure what to do. And I'm, I'm getting kind of down to the wire. Um, like Eric, you have lights in your cubes. Uh, how do you light your stuff? Uh, so in the past, not on the, on this cabinet, I had, you know, the led that came on the spool and, you know, you pull it out yourself. Um, I had it in the aluminum channels. I purchased my own aluminum channels, cut them to size. Uh, with those LEDs on the the roll, you know you have to you know snip them and do everything yourself. I had to solder the wires and run one wire from this way to the other side, and it's 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 a lot of work. And I was finding with some of the connections, I didn't solder them perfect, and they would flicker every once in a while. And I got rid of that. I didn't like it, so I went to the it's called Norfly by ikea it's ikea's lighting and i just found this out yesterday when or the other day when we were talking about it because i was going to show you that it's discontinued which i'm upset about but uh basically it's the led lights but it's already inside of the aluminum channel uh it's called like a u-shaped -sh -u channel or v-shaped channel to where it angles the lights inwards into the cabinet this way it lights up the front of the statue so you put it you know I, like in your picture lip, you had the like, lip yeah in your picture you have it like in the middle i would push it even more forward this way it brings the light in the front because even if you look at those pictures a lot of those statues you came in the fronts aren't lit up yeah uh so I, like um so i like the idea of the you know the round puck lights i think that looks really nice but the problem is is when you have them like above then all the light just hits downwards and to the sides and if you have a statue that's leading forward that's dynamic it doesn't light up the front of the statue so i like I mean, if you can't find the North flies anymore or something, you know, I would go with, like you said, like, like an aluminum channel right on the very, very front of the shelf and have it angled. So the light, you know, shoots at like a 45 degree angle into the cabinet. Okay. Um, I think you, Dan, I think you just pretty much have overhead lighting. Well, I, ha <clears throat> I have lighting on my shelves as well. Oh, I'm that's here. right. And what did you I use? Used, uh, I use these, the strip led it's kind of a cheap solution. Yeah. And I put a black, um, I found this half inch 
uh, anodized aluminum in, in black uh, metal that I put the strip up. I didn't want to see it, right? I wanted to be hidden. So I just put this strip of black aluminum in front of it, which makes it disappear. Um, it's, it's pretty good. I don't, I don't know if it's a, enough light, to be honest. Um, it's okay. It's just very okay. I, I, I just, as soon as Eric said the Northfly thing, I, I brought that up. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, they're, they, they work seamlessly. They all plug into like, um, you know, a, tra a transformer and you yep. can connect up like 10 transformers. So you can have like a hundred of these things all connected to just yep. one switch, which is really great. Uh, the other thing, wait, what I just, oh, the other the point I wanted to make about those, you know, those round, you know, puck lights is, you know, especially for Chris, because Chris has the YouTube channel. And like Dan, you just said, you want to try to hide the light. You don't want to be staring at the light. Right. Um, and I probably even show you now because I have them on my ceiling. Once you start going like that, you start getting like a, a glare, and if yeah. you're in your room filming, or you know, it, it can be distracting. So I, that's another reason I would stay away from those round lights because just because you could see them on on camera, I would try well, to hide the lights. And I did do the I did do the round lights for the ceiling, and obviously there's not much I can do about yeah, that. That's but, fine. but the thing the thing I like about it is I can change the warmth of it. I could change you know if I want to have some turned off or some blue or some just highlighting the sides and keep the middle off. Uh oh, he's no. frozen. <laughs> it's a it's a good pose though. I no. like <laughs> you all go <all> good. <laughs> what do you, Jeff? You don't have lighting, right? You just have a. Well, I'm like the laziest collector in the world when it comes to lighting. I do have puck lights, but I barely even turn them on. Um, yeah. Then this wall behind me, there's not even an electrical outlet, so I, that's why I use the pucks here. But I'm so tired of changing out batteries and. I rarely even turn them on. Yeah. Which is stupid. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I think oh, what a way to freeze, I tell you. Thank you guys. <laughs> I'm I'm excited for your collection, Chris, because I think once you have the lighting, it's gonna take your collection to another level. Cause you've never had like lights just like lit up on the statues. Always always had like the ceiling lights or like you know. It yeah, really I, enhances the statue when you have like a light shining at it. Back in the, I mean, the old, the old sideshow case, you know, when I had that, I did have one strip going around. So I, oh, I had, yeah, that yeah. was really the only thing I had lit up. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I'm like nervous about this is because I want it to be, I want it to be the right thing and I want it to really be able to be seen. So to me, I will probably go with the, with some sort of led strips. Everybody's kind of recommending that in the chat. So thank you guys again for that. Um, with some sort of, um, you know, that the, the diffuser strip that goes with it. Um, I just don't want them to really be seen. Like, I don't really want to be able to see the strips at all, like in yep. the case. And so I don't know exactly if they do that. Like they kind of like embed it in the drywall because so I'm having, I'm having my shelves drywalled in, but all of the tops will be um, MDF. So it'll, you know, and I, I had all the shelves. I don't know if you guys saw the video today, but like all the shelves are like double thick. Like they're going to be really strong. Um, he was really concerned about the weight. So we really wanted to double up on everything. And then, um, yeah, again, just good. update to, from today's video, I am doing built-ins along the side. Um, and so it's going to have open air four feet up basically. Um, and then below will be a, 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 a big enough area for all my third scales as well, but that will be lit. And I want it to be lit at the same time as the front shelves are lit. So I want that all to be connected. Um, and again, it's all going to be like app controlled and things like that. So, um, which is cool. Um, and again, I just don't know how much light, I don't know how much light is appropriate. And a lot of people said, you know, get the statues there and then play with the light. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that because I mean, the guy's going to come here and do it. Like he's going to put in that, put in that stuff for me. Um, again, I already have purchased the, uh, the overhead lights and before I was frozen, I was saying that the nice thing about it is I can, you know, change the colors and the, you know, however I want to configure it for YouTube or whatever. Um, and I like the idea of being able to change. I mean, I think pretty much my cabinets will like, I know like Jim Mint, he has all of his cabinets and they, they're constantly changing colors. That's, I, I just don't know if that fits my style, but you know, it would be nice to be able to do it. <laughs> Another freeze. Oh boy. I agree with them though. I don't, yeah. I wouldn't want mine changing colors. Nah. I mean, it looks cool, but I wouldn't want it always doing that. I mean, it looks annoying. <laughs> Not that it's a little thing. Put it nicely. <laughs> I, I want a warm white light. Yeah. yeah. 
that's the I other thing that the, the, the color choice like do you do warm do you do bright i mean some people like the, the cooler you know bluish white some people like the yellowish white so it's the other thing too now it's just getting ridiculous <laughs> jeez all right what was i saying do you even know Oh, uh, we moved on. We're, nice, on. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're, in, we're up to color temperature. What, what color yeah. temperature? Oh, well, you usually could change any color temperatures. We're talking about baseball now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think I was just saying that I think I'm going to pretty much leave my cabinets white most of the time because I just really want to show off the, the statues. I mean, that's that's the main point. Um, and then maybe use some of the overhead lighting for color, um, like blues or pinks or whatever, you know, in the room. So anyway, uh, do you guys think that's probably the best way? That's kind of what I was getting at. Do you guys think that's probably the best way is to just do the LED strips as opposed to the individual little lights? I do. For me, yeah. And like I said, you'll have those aluminum channels and it will hide the light so you don't have to stare at the little you know, LED bulbs everywhere. Exactly. We could do Dan's idea and just block it. With some of that. It's block pretty, it. pretty it's smart block. too because those, those aluminum channels are expensive. To- I've even seen some really, I, I, I saw, I've been looking into them today. They even have drywall channels. Mm. So you can actually create like, like beams of light basically going up and doing some sort of like architectural, you know, interest oh. area. So wow. it's like, it's like the channel is built into the wall with drywall. And then, you know, you just run the LEDs up those. And then you have these really neat lights kind of like, you know, you can space them out. I'm like that would be kind of cool on the sides yeah. um, to do something like that with some light. So I don't know. I've got some, I've got some thinking to do. Yep. That's for sure. Um, well, anything else you guys want to talk about with lights again? It's just, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it before I have to make these decisions. So you're doing the led strips like on, on the act, not the, uh, the ceiling on the actual display, like the, and he's going to put it inside of like aluminum channel. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would say about that is like I said, I had those on my first display. Um, it works re- really well for uh, a cool white temperature, but if you ever want to do like a warmish white, I don't know, maybe they've gotten better over the years, but I always had trouble trying to get like a warm white. I had to like always go into like a, a yellow color, which was a little bit too, too yellow. Was like, it? Mine to- look very yellow on camera, but they're not that yellow in person. They're actually more like a, a daylight. Um, uh, was it app controlled or was it just the... It was with the remote, you know, the, the ones that come with it. Like you get them on Amazon, it comes with a little remote. Oh, remote. yeah, those little, little thin, little yeah. thin ones. I mean, they, I mean, I'm going back like six years, so I'm, I'm sure they improved yeah. it by now, hopefully. So the stuff that I'm going to be getting is all going to be like, you know, it's all got a program and you can change it to whatever okay. temperature and warmth. And I mean, I think f- for me, I, I typically like the more of the cool white look. Okay. I mean, I think that's yeah, it's probably, personal preference. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm going to want to light this place up like a Christmas tree as much as I can. Cause again, I just, I feel like the brighter it is, it looks, that's, it depends on the, I don't know. I feel like the, the better I can get my lighting, the better it shows off the statues. Yeah, um, I don't, whereas I, I feel don't like know sometimes with yellow light, it can sometimes kind of mute it on camera. So I don't know. It just, yeah. On camera, mine look very yellow. My, it's, my, my lights don't look like this in real life. Like right now it looks, I'm looking at it on the screen. It looks yellow. It doesn't look like that. Yeah. It's it funny how the cool. camera plays it like that. Yeah. It's just interesting. Um, but yeah, anything else you guys want to say about that? Not at this Guess point. Not. All right. So now I need you guys just to talk about something while I go do a live pre-order. <laughs> oh. <Uh-oh. laughs> so are you emptying the cart? Is it going to be a surprise which one it is? <sighs> or both? I don't know. Do I get both? <laughs> Oh my god! That's probably gonna get both anyway. See, and that's that's the thing I'm really struggling with. This 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 renovation is a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's a lot of money. I mean, we're looking at you know, a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of money, and so and of course now I've just added custom built-in shelves on the sides that increases the cost, Uh, and uh, added a little nook which was not part of the original plan. So that's all been added. Um, and so I'm real hesitant to spend too much when I already As you have said, so you're not order. paying for them right away because they're not coming out for like another year or two or is one shipping right now. Is Vamp- Vampirella shipping it? No, she won't okay. ship. Man, I don't even know when. Well, let me, let's just look it up. Let me log into the prime one website. So you're just putting down a deposit right now. That's a good point. That's, that's a, that's a perfect that way to enable me. Right you said that it was like, at least, well, I'm not putting down the money right away. Like right now. Um, it's also interesting. I, I looked up Van Perla yesterday and, uh, it's funny. They don't offer her regular, the regular version at all on their website. Hmm. 
you have to get the um on whose side on prime ones you can only it's ah, only so the cool. bonus is available wow oh that's weird so where do you get the regular uh sideshow uh, sideshow Oh my God! How do you spell Vampril? I can't get it to go. V a m p i r e l l a, right? Yep. There she is. All right, so one thousand five hundred and ninety-nine dollars for her. She has no ES as of yet, mm -hmm. and October of twenty twenty-three to January of twenty twenty-four. All right, say October of two thousand twenty-four. Yeah, October. Oh, yeah, October of twenty. No, October twenty three to January oh, twenty. Oh, <laughs> it was like not another year. Okay, so let's let's vote. Dan, Batman eighty nine or Vamprilla? Uh, so much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say Vamprilla because I know you're going to get the Batman eighty nine at some point, no matter what. So then you end up with both. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, Eric, what's your vote? All right. This, and this just came to me because I really did not know until like two seconds ago. You've been talking about Vamprella for the longest time, wanting her. I think you just need to do it. Okay. Jeff Delaney. I think you should do Vampirella, but I'm going to harp on this because I always do. I think you should be using a referral code from somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Well, that's true. That's what I think. All right. Well... One of you guys send me one. <laughs> First one that sends me one gets the referral. How about that? Boom. Jeff, Jeff's yeah. the pro at that. Jeff's the pro. I'm going to log in. Jeff still owes me one, too. I guess I'm already logged in. <laughs> I, think I've got a, I think I've got like 40 bucks of points. <laughs> should cover the duty fee. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I should probably ask my wife what she thinks about this statue. Or this, this might just be like, oh, look what I got. <laughs> all right i sent it to our private chat okay but this is a good point it's a great idea to use use these friend to friends yeah yeah for sure okay well i had yeah. i have four three votes for vamprilla we got a double order in the chat by Luis mendoza well if he wants to pay for the batman i'll get the <laughs> batman too you guys can like swap them back and forth that's right so you're 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 hesitating on the eighty nine because you're hoping they do a returns, right? Yes, that's but, completely logical. But I also don't think I think that will be years and years away. Mm. When's so the next showcase? Soon, right? Uh, supposedly, they probably want to announce it this early, though. They they want to sell the other one first. All right, Vamprilla is in my cart. Oh, I always hate that. It always says if if you have one item in your cart, you have to empty it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, how do I remove that? Okay, I'm going to remove it. I'm going to go back into Jeff's link just to make sure. Well, on that next showcase, I hope they uh, they do a full reveal on their Terminator. I really want to see that all painted up. Isn't it supposed to be, like, allegedly pretty soon? I don't know. I mean, they, they gave us a pretty good peek last time showing K.A. Kim working on the, the portrait. And it looks really, really good. But, man, I, I want to see the full reveal. All right. I had $74 in cool. points. Uh, economy shipping is showing 218 And standard shipping, 232 Isn't that weird? $14 difference. Yeah, that's very strange. Which is crazy. So what do I do? Do I do the standard or the economy? Or maybe it's a oh, trap. It's can it change like last minute? Because the it can. And the standard shipping, you know, when you do that fast shipping, it you have to pay the extra import fee. That's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Tough call. Tough but call. It could, be, it could be two month difference. Yeah, that's crazy. Yep. All right, going into PayPal. So this is basically, so I, I haven't told you guys this yet, but I did officially um, sell my um, Killing Joke bust. Mm -hmm. um, but he does want to send it to me to review. Cool. Um, nice. So I'm still going to be able to review it. Um, but this is going to basically offset that. <laughs> that, uh, that factory pick looked promising of the Joker bust. It yeah. really does. And I have a picture when we look at photos here in a minute. Okay, good. Yeah. 
course, I've now got to do my password 17 times before I get the right one. <laughs> Ooh, there's a good sign. All right. Sorry, I'm sure everybody's super bored in the chat right now. <laughs> so Stanley in the chat is, say, is asking, when is Jeff's big statue coming? If he's talking about me and he's talking about the Hulk, that's a really good question because I think um, I think Todd's website says next year. But when Art Statue Collector did his review, he said that they're done. He said that the production's finished. Wow. So he's thinking it might be second quarter this year. That would be something. Um, so I have no idea when he's coming, but I can't wait. Are you nervous about um, the shipping? Yeah, I mean, he, he's fully paid for except the shipping. Todd still says on his website, $300. That's says, not bad. 300 for the single torso. And I think he had a 600 for the multi torso. And yeah, that it could be more, but um, I'll probably pay it. It's just yeah, one of those pieces. Sure. Um, whatever it is, I'll probably pay it. I want to thank the 275 people watching right now. I have now ordered Vamprilla. Yeah. So, so, yes, my first non Batman piece I've ordered in, gosh, ever. Wow. It's crazy. So, yeah, it's going to be something. I'm, I'm excited to have her. And again, I, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how she fits in. I hope she does. Um, again, the, the, have, having the privilege of being able to see her in person was, uh, I, I just thought she was awesome. Um, so, yeah. All you need to do is get a CGC 9.8 of that Vampirilla Catwoman issue. That <laughs> That's right. I, I need that. Actually, what I really want is that one um, Jeff Morris has. That art germ with the blood dripping down the oh, yeah, that's nice. Oh, it's such a great looking book. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> there's a I lot of great covers. I, I wanna I might, you know, if I have some space, I know especially initially, I'm gonna have a lot of space because I'm not gonna have enough statues to fill the cave. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is gonna be the perfect opportunity to pair up the statues with CGCs. Yeah. Um, you know, because I'll have the space to actually display them properly. Mm -hmm. Um because right now it's just too close together. But I think, you know, I, I, I kind of want to do that. I want to do some of the, those books to add some art like that to the, to the statues. So we'll see. Yeah, We'll see. So anyway, thank you everybody again for crossing over that 250 line tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, and with that said, are you guys ready to do some photos? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully I'll do this right this time. Let me know if you guys can, see the uh the large photos got them yep okay yep. all right so we'll start with this guy so this is another piece that we did see um at san diego uh, although as i said in my video the other day like the it was a really bad location for it it was really hard to see the detail yep. um kind, kind of dim like it was just we a weird place for him um, totally in shadow yeah really in shadow so he just kind of like everybody's kind of walked by him mm -hmm. um but here he's up for pre-order. Uh, I'm really actually really happy that it went up for pre-order because we kind of, for a while, we thought it might have been scrapped. Um, but this is a piece sculpted by uh, Matt Black, um, obviously the Robert Pattinson Batman. And I had a lot of people comment. They're like, yeah, this is not my Batman. It's cool. Um, there's also some question about the size of the bike, whether it's too big or too small. Uh, or, or people were thinking it was too small. Um, but I can't remember somebody one maybe one of you or somebody else um, posted a photo of it uh, next to an actual stunt double and it looked correct. Um, what is your opinion now that you've seen this one? Um, what, and also, what do you think of the price point being under a thousand dollars? Surprised. You know, yeah. like you, I was thinking more like twelve or twelve ninety five. Yep. Um, yeah, I think nine ninety five is pretty much right on for this. I've heard some people say you have to consider the motorcycle, the base. So it should, it should be in line with other PFs and be like 690 or whatever. I think that's completely wrong. I think Sideshow has a lot of very simple bases lately, especially on Star Wars pieces. Like mm -hmm. their Mando is really, I, I joke that their Mando looks like a apple fritter. I mean, it's just, <laughs> and, it's really, and it's the same thing with the, um, Ahsoka Tano has a really basic base. 
and there's others too. So even um, Power Girl, her cloud base is really, really simple. So no, I think the motorcycle is another character on that cobblestone street base. Uh, the, the base itself is a very narrow, you know, it's very simple uh, that the cobblestone, um, but yeah, there's just a lot going on. I love the, uh, the pipes here. It's got that burnt effect. I think that looks really good. Again, it's, uh, you know, just nice to see it in better light to be able to see the likeness. Um, Dan, what do you think of the likeness on this one? I think it's fine. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it looks good. Is it, is it the prime one, you know, Blitzway piece? No, no. But I think it looks really good. I mean, I would strongly consider buying this if I hadn't already bought <laughs> two Battenson pieces. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I was going to ask. I was going to say, if, if you hadn't bought those already, would you consider this sure. one? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, but again, I just it was it was in such a bad spot at San Diego. So I am glad that they that they went ahead with it. Uh, uh, you know, we've heard that Matt's no longer with the company, unfortunately, but. Um, He's a, he's a phenomenal sculptor and um, it's just, I'm just glad this, this piece is seeing the light of day. And people who think it's small, if you go back to that previous picture. Yeah. That's 22 inches wide. Yeah. It looks bigger on that. Yeah. It, it's not small. It's pretty substantial. Yeah. Um, some of their, some of their movie pieces, like I feel like some of their, their movie premium formats are slightly smaller than some of their comic book counterparts. Mm -hmm. um, just having owned some of the, the Dark Knight ones, they, they just yeah. felt like they were a little bit smaller. Um, so that might be what people are feeling about this one. But I think they're all going to be very much in line with all their other movie pieces. Um, and I think it's going to have a lot of presence. Um, and again, has, has Sideshow ever done a, a cycle like this? Have they ever done anything like this before? I can't think of a time. No, I don't think so. So anyway, that's just up for pre-order right now. Sorry, did somebody want to say something there? I said just a pogo stick. Yeah, well, yeah, just a pogo stick. That's well, the, the, the big topic was it, whether or not the bike was uh, the correct scale. Yeah, I thought I included the one with the uh, the uh, stunt double, and it looked pretty much, you know, pretty close. It was pretty close. close. Yeah, and it's still a prototype, so maybe. I mean, I don't know if they're going to change yeah. it. But, uh... um, speaking of bikes, uh, this is another piece. This is. Uh, kind of teased and went up. I don't, I don't, I can't remember if it's up for pre-order. I think it is already uh, at uh, yeah. Sideshow. This is from PCS. Um, this is their, their Ronin. Now this one's quite a bit more expensive. I think this was this one, 12 or $1,300. I think it's, it's like, like 15 14 and a quarter or something. Yikes. Wow. That's a lot. Wow. Um, and this is, is this is just quarter scale though? Is it, or is it third scale? No, that's quarter. Ew. So I wonder why there's so much more. Good question. That seems like a lot. Um, but anyway, it's a cool piece. Yeah, I think it looks really nice. It's really cool. It's got a lot of detail. I think it's going to be pretty sizable. Um, again, I love the colors on the exhaust. Um, I don't know. Are these like mouser droids? I'm not sure what these are. I, I don't follow the Ronin series, but maybe uh, somebody in the chat know. would know. K9 M112 Mausers. Okay, thank you guys. I knew somebody would know. And uh, I'm looking it up on the Sideshow site. No, oh, well, thank you very much, Jeff. But yeah, it's 1425 and it's quarter scale. It's got some really nice weathering on it. Again, it's very dynamic. Yeah. Um, Fun. So yeah, if you're a fan of the Turtles or a fan of the Ronin uh, storyline, this is probably something you'll want. Again, really cool piece from PCS. Um, I know uh, Aunt Adams has kind of teased some really big announcements. Um, some curious do you guys have any inkling of what he might be telling us or what license he like license he might be revealing no he said three licenses that he's wanted for a long time that are all very different from each other well i know he's been working on that dc license so i'm hoping that's one of them mm -hmm. that would be that would be pretty awesome what Although, scale you think one third or what i would love to see that mm-hmm but again, aren't a lot of his like one third stuff all comic or uh, video game based? Well, his Rocky line is one third. That's true. I just wonder if it would be a DC license if it would have to be video games, but which I wouldn't be as excited about unless they did some Arkham stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, who knows? I guess time will tell. But again, congratulations on getting new licenses. That's always exciting. But anyway, big piece, 21 inches high, 15 wide. 
I uh, got some swap outs as well on this one. So I love that. Yeah, that's cool. That's, that's cool. fun. That's, that's fun. Cool. All right, let's move on to this guy. So this is the, uh, you know, we got the official photos and price point for this. This is uh, the Dark Knight. So this is another decision I have to make. Um, I do have the, the life-size Joker, um, and I'm considering this one as kind of a counterpoint um, to kind of flank him on maybe like both sides of a display. Uh, I think the likeness is incredible. What do you guys think of the likeness? Yeah, it looks phenomenal. I mean, I, I'm not sure how you do better than that, but. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Do you guys think I should get it, or do you think I should hold out for one that's got the mask on? <laughs> that's a personal uh, preference thing. When it, when it comes to an actor likeness, I prefer an unmasked portrait, but I know a lot of people are different about that. Yeah, I'm not usually into unmasked, but if you're going to pay that much money, um, I think I would want it without the mask. Yeah. Well, I, I do like the fact that he's holding the cowl. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So I mean that that right there that that is cool. At least you have the mask in the in the pose. Right. Yeah. Let's have a light up feature. I don't I know like if I got, if I get this, would you also get the Hathaway or just call it good at Batman and Joker? I think either way would be totally fine. You could call it quits with just the two of them, or you could bring in Catwoman. Either way. Yeah, it's so expensive. You still have the banner going across the bottom, by the way. Yeah. Is it in the way? No, it's just running. In case you okay. Want well, let me, because it's not, not topic two anymore. So I'm sorry about that, guys. <laughs> My bad. All right, let's go back into it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would just do Batman and uh, the Joker. Skip uh, Hathaway. I think I would, too. I appreciate the advice, guys. Um, this is one I'd like to see a bust made of. Uh, did you guys see these? Uh, these are from McFarland. Uh, like, yeah. I've got actually, yeah. Eric bought one, right? Yeah, I ordered this. <laughs> yeah, forty dollars um, and free shipping from Amazon. Yeah, it's pretty great from Amazon. Um, did a video this week on it. Uh, I think it looks really good. I mean, I know it's not perfect, but I feel like it. I, I feel like that does look like Keaton to me. I feel like it. You could tell it's him. Uh, obviously, it's you know, a thirty dollars statue, but Obviously, this is what's the the look of the Flash movie is going to be. So I I expect I'm I'm sure you guys agree that there's probably going to be a ton of Flash merch coming out. Yeah, yeah. I, I found agree. it interesting his utility belt was black. We never seen a you know. Yeah, I don't love that. It. It's a lot of black. Yeah. Do you think, Chris? I think you mentioned this in your video. I watched your video on this one. Um, you think that that shiny look is accurate to the movie? Uh, I can't imagine it being because it wasn't like that in the other films. So I don't know if this was their attempt at trying to, because obviously this is PVC. Um, is this the same suit from the, like what he wears in the trailer? Because it's hard to tell he's moving around so quick. I would assume it is. Um, but I, I like right here, it doesn't look quite as shiny. It looks a little bit more matte. But here they have it in that studio where it's, you know, a lot of bright lights. Yeah. And like here, it looks better to me too. Like, you know, it doesn't oh. look as, it doesn't look as shiny. So I think it'll look better in hand, but you're right. I was kind of worried about that too. I'm like, Ugh, is that, is that the way it's going to be? But it's cool that we're, we're getting some merch. Obviously there's a, a flash also that's coming out. So I wanted to show everybody that um, I'm not as wild by this one. I don't think the likeness is near yeah. as good. This one looks a lot more plasticky yeah. to me, but. I don't know what that thing is. <laughs> it's the peg the whole thing. No, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, that was. I don't know if that was well thought of, but <laughs> anyway, it's 30, 30 bucks. Yeah, paint it yellow. Yeah, paint it yellow. Whatever. Yeah, this this got a lot of excitement too. That McFarlane is doing a Batmobile, so that's pretty neat. That's cool. I don't yeah. know what scale, and it looks like it's kind of like a diorama where maybe it's got some. Maybe so I've been following this a little it? bit. Uh, rumor was it's going to be either $75 or $85. And they said a seven inch figure could fit in it, which I make, think it makes it like one twelfth or something. I was going to say, was that one twelfth or one tenth? I guess. Well, I guess Somewhere one tenth there. would be a 12 inch figure, wouldn't it? All right, I'm not good with the smaller stuff. I can't remember. 
But anyway, I can see it being real popular at that price point. Yeah, I'm considering this. Uh, I want to see once it goes up for order. Yeah. So anyway, that's coming up. Oh, here's that shot that um, you were talking about, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, looking really good in the factory. Really good. Um, again, this one retailed, I think, $1,500 um, plus shipping, uh, but only $99 um, ES on this. So no, it ended up being higher. Remember, there was a big controversy about that. Oh, that's right. It, it did. Ended up being like was it 300 or something? Yeah. So anyway, I did sell mine uh, to another collector um, who's fantastic, and uh, but he does want me to review it. So that's really exciting as well. So hopefully I don't kick myself in the pants uh, when I see it and be like, oh, I should have kept it. But uh, I think it was the right call for me in the direction of my, my new cave. And uh, anyway, still awesome piece. Uh, got an in-hand photo of this guy. I know, uh, again, uh, Jeff Morris isn't with us tonight. He's ordered this one. So I wanted to show him that photo if he hadn't seen it. But I, again, like, why would you display it without the hammer? The guy didn't receive it. They never put it in the box. According oh, you're to kidding. Oh, oh my God. God. You're according kidding. to him. I don't know. <laughs> How does that happen? That's what he was saying. Oh, my gosh. That's his hammer. Yeah. Gosh, that's crazy. Well, anyway, uh, hopefully he gets it and <laughs> gets it no problem. But look how great that's looking. It's looking so good. It's hard to look intimidating when your right hand is missing. Yes, it is. <laughs> He's just got a stub. Uh, oh, wow. Did you guys see this picture? I thought it was pretty cool to see how big that penguin head. How big that penguin head is. Nah. That's a big head. It's yeah. big. It's even that big. So I mean, you know, it is. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Danny Vito was that big. Like, nah. <laughs> he's a pretty little dude. I was just looking at the other day images of the the movie. So anyway, I thought it was cool to see it. At least, at least you know how big it is because it is pretty expensive. I get that feeling with a lot of busts that they're it's oversized. Like, it was like, wow, is the, is is this head really that big? Yeah. Even even the Harley one that I have, it's like, wow, that's. Yeah, my my Joker, which goes to your Harley, his head is probably like a little bit bigger than my head, which yeah, mm -hmm. shouldn't be. Yeah. I uh, threw in some photos of uh, Punchline. So I I'm, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the review I did, but uh, what do you guys think of her in hand? I think she looks great. Yeah. Super fun. I love her. Yeah. Um, we we talked in our private chat. I feel like her, her head is a little smaller than some of the other ones. Like I feel like she matches up really well to the Hush Ivy. But next to the DC um, Comics Harley, her head's quite a bit bigger. So... Um, you know, it just might depend on how you place them next to each other. But obviously, she's third scale, and she matches up almost exactly height wise to the to the Harley on skates. But man, I love her. Yeah, it came out great. Yeah, can't wait till the Joker comes out. And I think Dan, you canceled your Joker, but Eric, you still have yours. Yeah, that's my most anticipated piece right now. Awesome. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to be much longer. It says. June, June to October, no, July to October, or something like that. I think we'll get it. I bet we'll get it sooner. It looked like it was close to done. Anyway, all the this this is one of those ones where all the portraits are so good that it's impossible to pick. So I kind of I don't know if I caught the entire live unboxing. So the hair was connected to the portrait, right? Yeah. Wow, I'm surprised they did that. Yeah, it's all connected. It's long too. That's why they have those those stands, mm. which are cool. Um, I saw this today. I thought this was a really cool looking display. Look at That's that. Amazing. Totally yeah. amazing. Isn't that cool? That's a lot of money in that room. Yep. But it looks really good. Yeah. I like the way they, they've got the, the LEDs running down the wall and, but it's just, what a, what a cool display. <laughs> really cool. Um, so, uh, this is the J and D Mira. Uh, this is started to ship. And this is a production version of her. Um, I am vicious, so I don't know if I should talk about this or not. <laughs> but uh, I think she looks great. I think it might be the best one they've done. I, I do, too. Um, I think the body looks incredible. I think her, her portrait looks really nice. Um, some people thought that maybe the silicone was a downgrade here. I, I think it's just a bad photo. I think I think it'll be fine in hand. Um pretty realistic the eyes look great so my problem with j and d is i don't think i could own one 
without putting it behind glass because I'd be worried about maintenance. Mm -hmm. And I hate yeah. having statues under behind glass. I like yeah. them out in the open. Um, very valid point. I, I, that's always a, a concern with silicone or anything. A lot of people feel like that should be behind something just to protect it just in case. Um, but I agree with you. I think this is, this is the best one they've done to date, which is funny because this is a character that people don't, <laughs> they don't like the actress. Right. Um, so it's unfortunate because I wish, you know, I wish more people had the opportunity to get her, but, um, that, do you guys all agree? This is the best one they've done to date. I think it's either this one or the wonder woman. I was going to say that Wonder Woman 84 is pretty nice. The one in the gold suit. Yeah. Mm. That's one of their first ones. Yeah, I really like that one. This looks great, though. I mean, yeah, I think it looks really good. I think it looks very similar to her. So, again, there's some J&D love. Uh, anyway, we've got a new one, again, from PCS. This, I, I think they're kind of wrapping up this line, I think. Um, from what I'm hearing, is that have you guys heard that too? This is I think so. I, I I posted that photo in my group and said I think that's the best female portrait that PCS has ever done. Yep. Yeah, I, I think so that. too. Again, if you're not a member of Secret Sanctuary on Facebook, guys, make sure you're a part of that group as well. Hey, um, I'm 40, 40 away from twelve thousand. I just need forty more subs to get twelve thousand. That is awesome. So yeah, subscribe on uh, on Secret Sanctuary on YouTube and also join the Facebook group as well. So that's awesome. Congratulations. That's another great milestone. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, but anyway, like I said, I think these ESs are going to be really small because I don't. I think Ant said they're not selling very well. Um, but clearly, he's wanting to still give uh, give the give the fans uh, kind of round out the collection. So. It's cool they're doing more of those. Uh, this one was uh, not what I was expecting from the Tweeterhead newsletter. I was actually hoping for maybe a, a Two-Face reveal or possibly a Batman announcement. Um, but instead, we got a Hordak variant. Um, this one is going to be shown at PowerCon, uh, which I think is coming up here real soon. Um, that's not one you're going to, is it, Jeff? No, I'm going to Monster Palooza. Okay, that's right. Um, and so uh, I think this one looks fun. I like the color variant. Yeah, some people said it should have been that to begin with. Well, maybe but that's Power, what PowerCon's not till August. Oh, so it's going to be a minute then. Yeah. I bet we see him at San Diego. Could be, although it's supposed to be an exclusive to PowerCon. Okay, well, maybe so. Well, this is also PowerCon. Yeah. Um, and I did not realize they were doing this, but they're doing a one fifth scale bust line um, with some of these that are calling it an artist series. So I, to me, that means it's going to be a really limited edition. I think this is Igo. Just, oh. just just him sculpting these. I think he sculpted this as like a um, like a test thing. Yeah. Interesting. Chet, That's cool. Chet said something about it in the newsletter. I forget what he said. That's neat. So I, I would assume that these will be very limited. Could be. So if you're a Master of the Universe fan, this might be a really cool piece to pick up. <laughs> uh, Spider Man. We saw this one in San Diego. Uh, this one's finally up for pre order at Sideshow. Um, haven't heard a lot of super excitement i know that this line has been kind of uh, kind of loved and hated because of the force perspective bases um i like them i think they're really unique um the feedback yeah. i've heard is people love the spider-man but they don't like the base yeah and they think it looks like he's sitting on the building <laughs> That's yeah. just, i mean look at look at this angle yeah like i don't feel like that angle looks good at all but i feel like from the front it looks okay Mm -hmm. but i mean it's just uh, they took a risk with this line and i think they i still think they've been really cool um but i could see where people don't like that like i just it's so different you know people are either going to love it or hate it yeah but it does offer i mean there are a lot of spider-mans out there so I and do, this again, is daniel I, bell. say that again this is daniel bell oh is it that's right oh really yeah. okay yeah. yeah i guess i forgot about that i don't why do you think they waited so long to put it up for pre pre-order <laughs> no idea. It's so weird. Like everything else has been up for pre-order for quite some time. Well, it was the exact same thing with the Batman on bike. Yeah. It's just very strange. Cause again, we saw this at San Diego. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was just a, a timing thing with the factory. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> this is the, I think this is already sold out. I think this is from bottleneck. Um, it was yesterday. Eric, Eric shared this with us. Uh, really cool print. Dan, did you, uh, Consider picking this one up with your. Uh, yeah, well, like we talked about in our in our uh, our group chat, um, like Eric, I 
I just can't. I, I've yeah. got two beautiful Batman animated series prints yep. in my display, and I, I love them. They're awesome, and I can't see replacing them because uh, I just got them, but these look great. And there's a black and white version of this that I, I like. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. You ask and you shall receive. Shall receive. <clears throat> would you get this one if you didn't have the other two? Would this be one that you would get? I do like it. I like the black and white, um, but yeah. Yeah, I think I kind of like the black and white a little better. Yeah. It's just kind of noir. It looks Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. I got the, yeah. um, the sepia tone of the last one that came out. Um, CC, I don't know if she's in the chat. She's, she joins the show sometimes, helped me get my hands on this one. And it's, it's just gorgeous. You know, it just, they do a, such a great job with their prints. It's awesome. This is another print that Bottleneck uh, offered um, as well. This one's a little bit more stylized, a little cartoony, but I like it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, Batman surrounded by his villains, obviously. Um, and then they also had a green version as well. So I don't know if this one's still available or not. I'll have to check, but I thought it was cool. I know at least one of those is sold out. I'm not sure which color version, but one is sold out. It's like cool. green one was only 25. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. ES at 25. That's crazy. I bet it's gone. I bet you're right. Um, I was really excited about this announcement. I am going to Fan Expo Dallas, and they've announced Stanley Art Germ Lau. Um, cool. Going to be at the show. So this is my first opportunity that I'll have to meet him. So I'm, I'm pumped. I'm excited. Get him on the show. <laughs> yeah. Now I need to get that Vamprilla signed. Yeah, I'm glad he's back uh, doing cons in the, the States again. Because I think yeah, la I don't know if was, yeah, last year he said he wasn't doing any of them. Now if we could just get Fabok out of Canada. Yeah. Love to see that. So uh, this was... Jimenez. Oh, I'd love to see Jimenez. Yeah. Jimenez is going to be... So that he... Um, and Bermeo. You know, yeah, he's doing... For those of you that into the, the comic book side. So he's doing an in-house signing with CGC. The deadline was... I don't know, a few weeks ago to get the books, your books in. So he's clearly in Florida sometime yeah. over the next couple of weeks. And he's not going to Megacon at That's the end crazy. of the month. I thought for sure, I'm like, oh, he's definitely going to come because he's coming up from South America. I mean, he lives, I think, Argentina. Yeah. Um, and he's not going to Megacon. I thought, wow. Well, maybe, maybe he just doesn't want to be around the crowds. I was shocked. I don't. He's a pretty boy. Well, seems like a pretty social guy. He's all over social media. You know, you follow him on Inst Instagram or you know any of the platforms. He's Twitter. He's everywhere. But oh, I was so disappointed. I thought for sure he'd be at MegaCon. Yeah, sure would love to meet him. Yep, be cool. Uh, so this photo is um, from an event. I don't know what it, what it was, but it's really cool. They have all the legendary beast uh, statues next to each other. Um, obviously that's the one Jeff's getting, but it's cool because we get to see the Iron Man next to him also. Um, look how great that lineup looks. Yeah. Did you, do you have those close up pics I posted? Uh, I've got this one. Oh, okay. Jay posted, uh, there's two different torsos for Iron Man. One is classic and one is modern. So he posted pictures of those. And then he posted a picture of the, the closed helmet, which looked really cool. It's yeah. awesome. I think that's my favorite one. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, again, it just it goes to show you how big Hulk is. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's crazy because Thor is really big too. Like it's crazy. I kind of wish they would have done something different with Cap's base, yeah. where it more match the other three. But I mean, mm -hmm. other than that, that's the only thing I could find. I mean, this is a beautiful set. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And of course, they have Magneto as part of that as well. Um, this was cool. I think this was all uh, thanks to Eric. Uh, I think he got a prop on this. This is the um, the Grim Knight. Um, somebody suggested to do um, these little bullets, um, and I think Eric, I think you were you found ones that were third scale. Uh, yeah. So I think I, I shared this with Dan. Um, so there's a company I got last over the I think it was oh, yeah over Christmas. I got into it's not it's not so much you're, you're building these things, but they do require assembly. Uh, they're one third scale uh you know guns and rifles and stuff like that and i got into like building those and someone i think someone asked in the group if they knew where you could find bullets and i just i was like yeah i just happened to have a company that makes one third scale replicas of uh guns and they do sell bullets as well for one -third. cool so, so they're like are they like hobby kits that, that sort of thing yeah they come in like maybe like 10 pieces and you have to put it together and you can do like all the different uh you know 
attachments to the guns and stuff, yeah. like, you know, the scopes yeah. and uh, the rails and all that stuff. You can, you know, change them up. So it's anyway, kind of it's, I thought it added a real nice dimension to the base. I thought it was kind of cool to, you know, do do a little adding on. So that's, that was neat. I think I have one right here. Uh, this one we just had a guest review of uh, for this week. This is finally starting to ship. This is the Wonder Woman versus Hydra. How do you guys think this one turned out? I think it's pretty cool. That's one of mine right So there's a right? fair scale AR-15. Nice. Wow, that's crazy, Eric. That's cool. cool. Uh, this this is a uh, Jason Fabbok piece. Pretty great. great. It's not my favorite Wonder Woman face uh, mm -hmm. compared to some of the other ones we've seen from Prime One, but it's so dynamic. Yeah, she looks great, uh, and the Hydra looks really cool. Look at the snake's texture; it's really good. I think Prime One did a great job with it. Look at that. <clears throat> Very cool. I think it would go really, really well next to the um, the Batman versus Joker dragon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I threw these in here. I thought this was pretty cool. Somebody did a, a is it Vis Vincent or I can't think of it. Vicente. I can't remember exactly how he pronounces his name, but uh, did a repaint, which is pretty cool. It's kind of the the going rate right now is uh, is uh, flesh colored ivy. Yeah, but it's like kind of uh, cool to see her like that. I, I still think I still prefer the green. I like the green, but I like the different contrast between the the plant and the the body of. The yeah, body. definitely pops more. It'd be fun to have them both and display them next to each other. It would. It's just always cool to see how they would turn out if they painted it differently. Yeah. But anyway, I thought it was. I thought she was real pretty. Colors definitely pop more. Yeah. He does a really great job of painting. Yeah, he's, I was just going to say, he did a great job. Especially the flesh. Like, he always yeah. you know, highlights areas that would be brighter, and it's just, it's just he just, he, he understands it so well. I've been following him for years. Um, Hush Batman from um, McFarland Toys. Um, so this is a, a new one that's coming out if you're a toy collector, uh, and also a Robin as well. So I always like to try to highlight some of those. Uh, this one finally went up for pre-order. This is the Jean Grey Classic from um, XM Studios. What do you guys think of this one? I haven't heard much about this one. I like it. People have complained that um, her breasts are too small. <laughs> that doesn't uh, sound like the collecting community. Well, it's funny. <laughs> that people, were, people were posting pictures of Spider-Man that had a similar... Uh, Upper body physique is this, is this one. <laughs> that sounds about right, doesn't it? Uh, one thing people liked is that when they first showed this, um, her hair was very brown and they added a lot of red accents to her hair. People were happy about that. Yeah, I think the hair looks really nice. I, I love the, the blues they chose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got a really nice contrast. Uh, obviously, they've got this portrait and then this one, which is cool. I don't think it's as beautiful as the sideshow piece. I was going to say no, the sideshow piece to me is a, a nicer looking piece. Yeah, I like the suit I, better on this though. I just, it just has more colors and stuff going on. Yeah, it's got the texture. It's got a lot. I, I agree. I think the colors are better here, but I think you cannot beat that sideshow sideshow portrait. Yeah, yeah that one's uh, probably more classic and to the suit as well. I think. Who did that portrait? Was that Mark? It might have been Mark Newman. Yeah. Yeah, I think it might have been Mark. Um, it's cool though. I mean, it's still a cool piece. It's uh, dynamic and definitely has a nice pop of color. So that one's up for pre-order at XM. And uh, hey, it's got that same base that Harley Quinn has at Sideshow. <laughs> the bubblegum base or whatever nice. it is. Ice cream, ice cream base. That's cool. I think it actually looks pretty cool. Yeah, I'm really liking the statue a lot, actually. Yeah, I think it's really pretty. Um. Would look good with uh, the sideshow nightcrawler. Yeah, it would. Uh, this one was teased by Stanley Art Germ Lau. Uh, they think this is the the bunny character from Batman, uh, which is pretty interesting. I I made a post of like this would actually make a pretty cool Prime One statue, um, and I could see them doing her in the line if this is a, a popular yeah, cover. Can you uh, explain who that is? Because nobody else seemed to know who it was either. So she was in the comics. Maybe Jeff would know more than I would, but she was in a in the comics for a very limited time. Um, but I know she made a bunch of covers. I don't. I don't know anything about her. 
All right. So homework project for you, Eric. <laughs> hey, you. You're the one I think you made this up in your head or something. I, <laughs> really is. Is. <laughs> I will find a photo of her before the end of the show. We'll show you. Okay. Um, got some new hot toys from Bad Batch. Uh, if you're a hot toys collector, um, those are cool. Yeah, they really look cool. Bad Batch is a fun show. I have never seen it, um, which I probably should, but I, I think that all, all of these have looked really neat. The sculpts are, are really cool. The colors. Yep. Uh, they also have this guy, Tech. Tech, yeah. Um, which looks cool, but look how cool they all look together. They're, just all, they're really neat. So if you're a Hot Toys collector, I wanted to throw those in there. Uh, also through this one in here, these are this is the Famine, um, part of the uh, the Four Horsemen line that uh, XM's doing. This is kind of their own line. This thing looks awesome. All of these look really cool. They do. Um, you know, I think you have to be a certain a certain kind of collector to 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 buy these because they're obviously you know just different. They're not comic book based or anything. Um, but man, they're really neat. A lot of great texture. A lot of great detail. Look at that thing. It's cool. It's scary. I can't remember. Did Art do one of these? I can't remember if he. I think he. Maybe, I don't think he did this one. Maybe he did one of the others. I can't remember. But check out uh, Art Statue Collector's channel if you want to see more of this guy. It's cool. Really neat detail. You got a uh, super chat. Uh, that's perfect timing because that was all the photos. Uh, let's see what we got here right there. Five dollars uh, from Lane Kramer. Uh, she is from Batman, the darkest one six originally by David Finch. She is known as a C list, sexy female character made a few other appearances. Chris, uh, I just sent you an image to your, to our private chat. Her name is white rabbit. Yeah. So white ra rabbit. Yeah. White rabbit. Let me uh, bring up the photo. What was it Batman, the dark Knight one through six. Yeah, that's that's the photo that I that everybody always sees. I just don't know how how much. Again, Lane, thank you for the five dollar super chat and dropping the knowledge. Thank you very much. It's it's heard. really cool that it was by David Finch. Uh, let me uh, update upload this photo here for you guys. So she's right here, and again, I, I just don't remember her her lasting very long. Hmm. Um, but there she is. Cool. So, I mean, you can imagine a statue. I think she would <laughs> probably do very well. I mean, obviously, she's <laughs> kind of like a Playboy bunny is what yeah, she is, play. really, yeah, <laughs> is what she looks like. So, um, I sent you another one with Joker in it, too. Okay. Her and Joker. I'll just wait until it's, it's a very muscular Joker. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's like a, kind of like an Arkham Joker. Uh, let me uh, add that one as well. Thank you for sending the photos. Yeah. Looks so like she, the other one. She defeated Batman on that one. Um, wow. That's yeah, funny. I mean, he's, he's doing the Nicholson line. That's yeah, funny. that's yeah. Wait till they get a load of me. I mean, and, and huh. I could I could see why he's got a big smile on his face. So you yeah. know, it's uh, everybody wins. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's uh, the character that's being teased by Stanley Art Germ Lau. Why why he would be bringing her back now? I don't know. Mm. Unless maybe she's going to make a reappearance in the comics. That's the only thing I can think of. Sure. Ooh, that's um, but anyway, that's cool. I, again, I can just it just has Prime One all over it. I could see them doing a, a one of her to go along with Supergirl and um, Black Canary and that that line yeah. that they're doing. So well, anyway. Lane says that Joker is actually a Clayface. Oh, uh, yeah. well, that's, that's why he's, he's smiling even more. He's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's really great. Uh, so yeah, anything you guys saw tonight that uh, is must have. For you guys i don't I, I, a lot of the photos like it's been hard because i feel like we've been kind of in this drought a little bit like there hasn't been a lot of you know like once we have the prime one showcase done and you know sideshow will show a piece here and there xm here and there but i, I feel like it's been kind of slow here the last couple months i'm gonna get that iron man from legendary beast you are gonna get it that's awesome yeah, that's cool oh, that's incredible so which ones do you all have then you'll have him hulk and uh yeah, thor and thor and I have a line on a Captain America that probably will come in the next month or two. Well, that's exciting. Wow. I, mean, I mean, gosh, you're going to have that display pretty much. Yeah, I, I might not need anything else. I don't need any of the villains. Um, so, yeah, that might be it for that. Is there, any, is there any other hero you would want? From, from Marvel? 
Yeah, from from that line specifically, like who would you want added? Um, if they did a really cool Black Widow, maybe that would be cool. Are they are, are they announced in the other characters, or are they stopped at Hulk? For that line, no, they've got a they've got um, Cyclops coming up, which is kind of a a it was kind of a failure for them because they're designs are too close to the XM quarter scales that already came out. So I've heard the addition size is going to be really low on their Cyclops. Hmm. Um, apparently there's a Wolverine coming, but of course that's not an Avenger. Right. Um, so I don't know what's next for this Avengers line. I'm not sure. Interesting. I feel like, I feel like we saw a uh, Wolverine teaser. I don't know if it was them or not. We might have seen it. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like you're right. I'm just trying to think of... I don't know the one. I, the one I always think about is the the PCS Wolverine, which I love. I I think that one turned out really great. It did, yeah, me too. Um, especially when they made the updates. Um, yeah. it, it really made a difference. Um, okay, yeah, he's just now that I'm thinking, about, yeah, we did see some type of Wolverine from Legendary Beast. I don't know if it was just renders or what, but I don't remember it now. Well, I I suspect it was just you know uh, how, you know how Jay is. <laughs> I hope yeah, I was allowed to say that. <laughs> he's an elbow, you know. Sorry. Uh, Commander Zero says Wolvie has been an adventure before. Well, I, you know, the Avengers are like the Justice League. Every single <laughs> character from Marvel has probably been an Avenger at one time. It's like that. it's like Vampirilla fighting Catwoman. <laughs> oh, okay. right. yeah. We got to stretch it out a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, well, anything else you guys want to talk about? It. We've we've gone two hours tonight. Um, anything else you want to tackle? No, I got a date to watch The Mandalorian and eat pizza. I like nice. the way you're thinking, my friend. That's fantastic. <laughs> Uh, I want to wish everybody uh, just a fantastic rest of your week. Um, got a lot of content coming up. Anything on your channel, uh, Jeff, that you want to plug or Eric, any, either either of you guys? I might do a uh, unboxing of my Wiz Comics number 13. Nice. That's Come fantastic. I, yeah, I can't wait to see what that looks like. I'm really excited about that. Um, how about you, Eric? Anything, any projects that you're filming or got I up? have a ton of stuff filmed. I just haven't edited it. It's been a while since I've uploaded something. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. Uh, my channel is actually, I think I'm 50 away from finally reaching a thousand. So that's exciting. That's awesome. That's, awesome, that's guys. really cool. Thank you to everybody. Keep up the grind. Right. Keep it up. It, it, it pays off in the end. Uh, and so again, <laughs> these guys, these guys do great content. So please, if you haven't done so, please check out all things art and also Secret Sanctuary. Uh, I also mentioned like Art Statue Collector. Check out his channel. Uh, great content there as well. Um, and just yeah, just continue to support. There's so many channels right now. I, I can't even name them all, but they're um, you know just please go out and support those guys because it is a lot of work, like Eric said, and um, you know it's, it's it, it makes this hobby a lot of fun. So and 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 don't forget about only Dan's. <laughs> I forgot about the only Dan's <laughs> website. So we got the only Dan's. Can't we have to plug that? I, I swear we've got to do a T-shirt of that. It's so it's, it's just way too funny. Um, but anyway, I hope you all have a great um, the rest of your week. Uh, I will be on spring break next week, um, so I don't I don't know if I will go live at all during that week. But I I think I've got ten videos in the can uh, for you guys. So a lot of content. I just filmed the Harley review, so that that'll be coming up maybe tomorrow. I don't know. But uh, anyway, got a lot of content coming your way. So. Thank you guys so very much. Thanks for the nearly 300 tonight. That was awesome. Um, and I can't thank you enough. And we'll see you next time in the Batcave. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Everyone, see y'all. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Good night.